Alright guys, welcome here to Town Hall Heroes, episode number 62. We have an interesting pre-show, but we are now here live with our actual episode to talk about some phenomenal Heroes of the Storm discussion. I am Solid Jake, I am joined by a giggling bunch of buffoons, and let us start introducing with Ia Ayakona. He doesn't know which it is, but it is... You actually explained this to, during the pre-pre-show. Before you even tell anyone who you are, explain your name. So, uh, basically, I would use an old name, and I decided to... It was, like, Aviator, and I decided to change it up. Good I've been call. using it for, like, five or six years. <laughs> Good call, Jerry. <laughs> and then I played a lot of supports in uh, previous games, like healers and medics and stuff. So, I was a little uncreative, and I basically just started translating healer, cleric, priest, support, all those words into various languages until I found one that seemed <coughs> nice. So the one I ended up for um, is Hawaiian for healer, I believe. Um, and I, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation horribly, but I've been going with Iacona. Yeah, that's smart. Iacona is definitely the way to say it, no matter how it's actually pronounced. Even though I've looked online and I found like five different official pronunciations for it. Some of them are like really off the board. There's like Iacona or something, and there's some Ooh. really crazy... I'm going to start saying that in the cast. Yakiona. <laughs> Sounds good. Has a nice ring to it. So, for anyone that doesn't know who you are, why don't you introduce a bit about us, and then we'll actually continue on. About yourself, not us. You, you. <laughs> yeah, we are we're yeah, peace. We're peace. Solid, solid Jack. Over there. Right. Try and again. Try again. We have Kubi, and we have... Oh, oh. It's tough. I know. It's, it's real tough. It's taken us 61 episodes to get the whole weird <laughs> thing going. <laughs> All right. Introductions. Um, so, I've been in playing the game more or less since the beginning i got in pretty early on but i started playing around june and i joined <coughs> what was then to become wildfire in july or august and i more or less played for that team for six seven eight months and then recently i uh, rejoined the team and um then they eventually became what they're now known as stellar lotus and i've been playing the support role the entire time in its, in its existence, or at least ever since I've been on the team. Before I joined the team, Pickles actually played support, but then he switched roles when I joined back in July or August. Very cool, very cool. All right, we'll get more into that in a bit, but we're just going to keep moving forward with introductions for this week. And Kev, how have you been? Your webcam is working. Yeah, uh, webcam is finally working. I don't know what was going on or what is going on. Skype apparently decided to stop liking my webcam, so that kind of sucks. But uh, other than that, just got my passport. Nice and nice and fancy over here. Yeah, got that Can today. Can you open it up to the third page, please? <laughs> nope. <Yeah. laughs> uh, <laughs> passport buddies. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. I'm pretty hyped. You know, I don't. I had plans to go to Germany this summer but they got canceled because i have to apparently move um because we're losing our roommate so i was gonna move but now or i was gonna go there and have a vacation but now i gotta like move and find a new apartment and all that stuff so don't think i'm gonna have the ability to do that this summer uh, maybe later but other than that pretty good just playing a lot of heroes casting here and there but that's about it lord kubis the master of sergeant hammer down there yes i got to drive the car yesterday to drive the cat Drive the cat, excuse me. How could I, how could I mess that up? <laughs> so, yeah, I got to observe for the first time for ESL yesterday because we made some production changes. Got to use the new slaving observer technology. Technology, I'm going to call it that because it's, it is new and it looks pretty neat. So that was fun. That was uh, interesting to feel the, I guess the, the shoes of Jake, always doing the observing and casting at the same time. But it's fun. Other than that, riding unicycles. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Just gonna drop that in there. <laughs> I will follow up on that in a moment. Jared, what's up with you? I move this Saturday into the team house. That's it's, so uh, gonna be fun. Sixteen hour drive, nonstop. <clears throat> gonna be gonna be fun, but Woo! are you driving yourself alone? Yeah. What are you gonna listen to? What music? <laughs> the important questions here. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't thought How do you about not it? know? That would be my first time. Like, what am I going to do? Jared, to occupy my I have a challenge now. for you. You know the 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 albums now. They have like now one, now two, now. <laughs> I want you to listen. Go through <laughs> from every the beginning. Now. I want you to download a directory starting with now one. 
and then just go through history of America. You will experience everything about our culture. Why don't I just do kids Wait, bop instead? No. Nope. I was gonna say, yeah, why not kids bop? That was better. Uh Jared and the kids. That's now good. is better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever said now is better. <laughs> you heard it here, boys. Cheese. Well, I guess the only new things for me is I I spent the I spent my Twitch winnings on a Surface Pro three or not Pro, just Surface three. <coughs> Very excitable, and I started working out again. It feels good to actually be less of a. Why is that excitable? Um, explain. It, it's exciting. Explain. I'm excited. Well, then it's exciting, but it's not excitable. Well, a I, tablet I, can't be excited. I use like, what was it, dude? I, get angry at you when you like play it wrong? Like, I, I was getting excited. I, I ironically use words that make sense but are incorrect. That's something I always do. How are you just getting the sixty-two weeks in? No, it's just fun to point it out. Okay, good, good. I'm happy for you. Now, I've got the tablet. That's exciting, and I started working out. That's exciting. But Kubi mentioned his unicycle, and I just need to tell a brief tale about this before we hop in. So I typically stream till around 7 o'clock on Wednesdays, and then I get ready. I cook food, and I get ready for Town Hall. Well, usually Kubi's home by then, and I knew he was home because I can hear the garage door open. But he was nowhere in the house. I was calling for him, so I walk in the kitchen, and I'm getting ready, and I'm, like, at the sink in the kitchen. And I look out the window, and there goes Kubi on his unicycle, arms by his side, just pedaling down the road. And I just died. I just burst out laughing. You look up and you see your roommate, who you thought would be in the home somewhere, on a unicycle. And I know he unicycles, but I've never just seen him in his natural habitat unicycling. And it was beautiful. It was actually just marvelous. So, Kubi, yep. thank you for that moment. Sure. No problem. But let us go over to Ia Ayakona. To yeah. talk more about Stellar Lotus now. So Jeff the rest of the episode. <laughs> Gonna figure out how many different pronunciations you can fit in. It's Jeff, not Yef or anything weird yeah. like that, Jake. I mean it's Jeff. So Stellar Lotus is, of course, a new brand. Wildfire existed since pretty much the beginning, one of the oldest teams in the Heroes community. But now you guys have been picked up by Jesse Cox. Tell me more. It was more. a merger, though, right, of Wildfire and Tempest. It wasn't just... Or was that the original Wildfire ro roster? You guys like, had a team what? merger at some point? I'll let you go ahead and explain it. Jeff. Um, <laughs> trying to think of where to start. But uh, like any um, interview was saying, originally Jesse reached out to Nightmare, who was on Tempest at the time, and said that he, hey, I really like you, or I like your streaming and stuff. Do you want to join this team I'm making? I think this was sometime after BlizzCon, which Jesse played in and kind of got excited for heroes from that. And he saw Nightmare and he said, oh, do you want to join my team I'm making? And then Nightmare uh, is more like, I'm sorry, I'm already on a team with um, Diamond on ESV Tempest and uh, just go talk to him instead. And then Diamond and um, Jesse, uh, Pat and Jesse started talking a lot. And instead of kind of taking instead of nightmare like kind of joining this new team that jesse's gonna be making instead jesse changed his mind and he was going to be um using the existing esv teams to make his new teams from <coughs> he was going to use those as the the basis and so we uh did a we did a couple we we're going at that and we did a couple roster swaps where we moved pickles and war Greymon over to tempest and we moved um oop um over to uh wildfire and kind of was trying out trying that out and see how it was going and it wasn't really going too well i guess for wildfire and we ended up uh <laughs> disbanding and it was just tempest at the time and so tempest kind of um became the then became what turned out to be stellar lotus but shortly um I guess shortly after the roster swaps happened where we switched a couple members on each team, Treble actually uh, retired because his cystic fibrosis was getting kind of bad and he wasn't able to actually keep up with the lifestyle of being a pro gamer. So um, then after that, they were trying out a lot of different supports <laughs> and ended up um, choosing me in the end, uh, which I joined. I rejoined the team like two or three weeks ago. Shortly before the announcement was made about Stellar Lotus. 
Okay. Very cool. That's actually awesome to have the insight. And just big shout out to Jesse Cox for actually getting involved in <laughs> Heroes. I mean, back in the day, we had Total Biscuit creating Axiom for StarCraft. He's a big YouTube celebrity who made his own squad. Same kind of idea. But to be pursuing something like Heroes, which is still very young, is actually awesome. Well, just look at the timeline of it, too. Like, Jesse, after BlizzCon, was so, like, happy and impressed with the game that he himself looked into streamers and reached out to them. Like, yeah. it sounds like he, not, like, he not, it, like people didn't approach Jesse, like, hey, let's sponsor him. So, like, he was very proactive with this, which is really cool. That's something you want in a team owner, so that yeah. sounds really exciting. Thoughts and questions, guys, on the matter? Uh, of so one of the big things that he mentioned, especially in this announcement of acquiring the team, is that, boom, team house. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Where is it? When are you guys moving in? Give us the details, if you can. Uh, it's in uh, Michigan, um, up in the north. Uh, a little different than Arizona. You know, a little colder, has some snow. That's but nice. uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty different, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty different, then. Uh, but the, uh, the team's... Um, as actually um, four of the members have moved in, um, four minus me, three of them, Toe Jam and Earl, Nightmare, and War Greymon moved in, I'm thinking two, uh, a week to two weeks ago, and uh, Pickles just moved in uh, like Thursday or Friday uh, once his classes were done and he was done with his exams, he uh, hightailed out there, um, and I'm not actually moving into the house myself. Because I'm, I'm actually only brought on for this season of ESL until they um, will find, I guess, a more permanent member. But I, I have a commitment to my job right now, and it just didn't quite work out. So I was just kind of brought in um, for the time being since they qualified for ESL and they needed to lock down a roster. So what you're trying to tell us is that you're two esports for esports. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> So there are so there are <laughs> actual somewhat permanent plans in place to transition yourself at some point after the season. Is that is that the case or right now they um, they're currently uh, pursuing other uh, people. Um, I believe that they're in process of locking down a permanent member, but there are some issues coming up of kind of getting the coordination of moving and traveling and all that. Yeah. And it, it just wasn't quite working for the time frame of yeah. all of a sudden now being told that you're in ESL major league, you need to lock down a roster now before roster locks come sure. in. Okay. And it was just so, a timing thing. You are going to be mentoring the next godlike Uther. That's what's going to be happening. You could say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I like it. <laughs> Wait. When did Iacona change his name to Utherbot? Wow. Utherbot, too good. <laughs> right. Utherbot is pretty good at the game. I I, uh, I looked at Utherbot, and he I talked to him, you know, and picked up some tricks. Well, let's talk about, them. like, you, like, personally a little bit. Like, Google's, like, obviously, well, I mean, like, it's an awesome place to work. Like, was that a, like, how hard of a decision was that for you to make personally, like, between, that, like, going with the team and then sticking with your job? It was actually a really hard decision, and I thought about it for weeks, and I was going back and forth, flip-flopping. If I wanted to quit my job to be a pro gamer and go move in a house, um, do I want to stay working at my job and kind of keep playing on a team, like an online team, and kind of see where that takes me? Do I want do to I... have money, or do I want to not have money? <laughs> yes. Whoa! Hey, I know the esports life well, man. <laughs> and it just it wasn't quite going to... It would actually cost me money to leave my job right now that um it, it wouldn't really quite pay out to do well um, in esports right, right. yep. uh, probably and, a lot more complicated right. than it would seem on the surface so it was a very complicated complex kind of tricky situation i was in and i weighed out my options and for the time being it seemed that i should keep my day job and kind of moonlight as a pro gamer right now and see where that takes me in the next couple months and then when I don't have as many kind of restrictions um, from my current job and to kind of reevaluate what I want to do with the game. And After you uh, leave, like, or, like, get replaced or the sub company, whatever it is, are you looking to stay on as Stellar Lowers as, like, a uh, coach or help do management or anything like that? Or is it just like, all right, guys, I'm off. Later. Uh, right now I'm looking, um, when I do get off the team, to uh, join another team as uh, for main roster and continue okay. supporting. 
I totally just, when Jared explained it that way, I picture like the end of the Lord of the Rings series. You're Frodo Baggins. You're getting on that Elvis ship, and you're just peace done. <laughs> Not Frodo Bilbo. Frodo, I was like Frodo got on a ship. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even know his lore. Bilbo boys learn yeah. the lore. Yo, Frodo gets on the ship. Oh, okay, see, I'm the worst. I actually just all of you should actually hate me forever. How, how many times have you it. seen Lord? Frodo I've gets seen on the ship so many with times. Bilbo to go to the wet. Like, I watch it every year. I know I'm I'm terrible. Moving they both on. get on. The moving boat. on. I've never even seen the movie. You watch it every year? I haven't watched it in years, and I knew that. I'm Read a really freaking bad. book, guys. Read a book. Go watch the movie again on your surface. <laughs> okay, I'll watch it on the plane. <laughs> Go watch it right now. Let us. Let us move forward unless we have further questions about Seven Lotus. Are we good? We Gucci? We'll touch on For it now. more when we get the tournament discussion. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's just briefly say Kale Foss has, in fact, been confirmed as the next hero. Now, this is very exciting. And they've, they've only shown us a wee bit about him. We know his two heroics. I'm trying to pull them up. And uh, the internet is not respecting my wishes. Here uh, we go. Let's just point out what's important here. Pyroblast! Pyroblast, indeed. It's essentially, from what I can tell, an ancestral healing of DPS, right? Massive, massive burst. Has a bit of a wind-up. Don't know if it can be body-blocked at, like, a triple tap or something. Um, and we, we know it has splash <laughs> damage. has some splash damage around it. So, very cool. It's going to be fun to see how it actually pans out. But that is one of the two heroics. Kev, why don't you shout out the name of the other one? Phoenix! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Phoenix! Not Phoenix. Phoenix. No, Phoenix. no you're good. It just took me a minute <laughs> oh, to queue okay. it up. A little bit longer to queue it up than I, than I anticipated. And watch a Phoenix at a target a area dealing damage to enemies along the way. The Phoenix persists attacking enemies and dealing splash damage to those near, near its primary attack target. Now, this is interesting. It says primary attack target, and it says it deals damage on the way. So by the sound of it, you put it on a location or on a primary target, so you actually have to select an enemy hero to cast it, and then it persists as like a turret? I don't really know. What did you guys take out of this? Sounds kind of like a modified Hyperion, but that you just pick an area that it goes to. That's my Wouldn't guess. Maybe something like a drill, a laser drill. You drop it down and it continues attacking enemies that are kind of in a radius. It doesn't look like it has a health bar. Is it invincible laser drill? <laughs> Sounds scary. <laughs> Sounds like a phoenix. Th thanks, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably the what he's here for. Second heroic for, for, for Kale Fels. So, I just want to, like, get this in everyone's mind to, like, we're going to dub it, do it. Like, this is going to be, like, the, an Artosis pylon type version of thing. The first player, the first Kael'thas player to waste a Pyrobast on a Tassadar, they get dubbed, like, as the, the Artosis what? pylon of that ability. Yeah. So, that's the thing. Actually, we're getting confirmation in the chat that you can Divine Shield to get away from it. Stuff like Pyroblast. This could increase popularity on an ability like Ice Block. We've already seen Ice Block on a few heroes, but it's not something we see in a lot of kits. And it could be a very strong reactionary thing for someone like Jaina. If you think that you can just Pyroblast to kill Jaina, guess what? Ice Black, Black, Block, oh, words. There we um, go. And, words. There uh, you go. English. And guess what? You're, you're fine in that moment. So I, I really like the idea of having a response to it. But it sounds like it can't be blocked. Well, it can be. Trick said something about figuring out a way to tank it. So. Oh, I see. Maybe there is a That's way vague. that you can intercept it. Interesting. Hmm. Same mm. conversation we have every time before our heroes. Yeah, we waste. don't know. We don't Until know we see it. numbers, <laughs> yeah. it's all speculation. Yeah, yeah, but it's exciting, and it's, we know it's it's hype. We know he's the next hero, guaranteed. And he's been wanted for a while. It's it's like if he doesn't come out tomorrow, which seems unlikely, he should be out next week. Tomorrow? Just yeah, of course it's unlikely it. tomorrow. Why would he come out tomorrow? We've had Thursday launches before for patches. When? It's been a while. It's been a while, <laughs> but it has happened. And maybe in a different game. No, it's happened in Heroes. You sure? Yes, positive. I don't really know about it. 
We've had news come out on Tuesdays and patches come out on Thursdays. It has happened in the alpha, not in the beta. I should clarify. Are talking that. like Lily patch? <laughs> Maybe, but it did happen. What is a Lily? God, don't crush my like hopes and dreams. Do you call Lily Lily? Lily Potter, boys. It's Lily. Yes. <sighs> the aggro. Okay, Eia <laughs> The aggro is real. All right, all yeah, right. Yeah, Moving on, yeah, let's yeah. talk <coughs> quickly about WCA. Now, the bracket has been released. Did we talk about this last week? I don't think we did. Pulling it up. We can talk about it again anyways. Iacona, you guys will be competing in that event. Jared, you guys will be competing in that event. Dude, Thoughts so on the event. And actually, I just want to point out something really quite cool. Since we announced this event, since this event existed, two teams that were on the brink of getting sponsorship have now been sponsored. That's the kind of power that like actual events have That's of point. getting more stability into the scene. So as I pull this up, we can look at two things, right? We have Shot in the Bullets Reloaded, formerly Shot in the Bullets Reloaded. They've been playing the ESL Major League. That's good, great, and dandy, but they got invited to play in WCA. Cognitive signed them within days. Same yeah, thing with Zevaron. Zevaron is formerly Murlocs Geniuses. Literally the day after they were announced to be part of WCA, Zevaron locked them in with their, with their sponsorship. <coughs> so that's really cool. This is the bracket, and it's going to be, I mean, it's $19,000 in prizing up for grabs. Let's just go over why WCA is important. The number two and number three most earningest players in Hearthstone got first and second place at WCA. In China. The and they've barely like won anything else. Yeah. So that WCA is like <laughs> That esports like, money. That is that is what actual esports money is. <laughs> this is an eighteen K prize pool tournament and it's a qualifying. <laughs> yeah. A qualifier. It's bigger than any event NAEU has seen, and it's for another event that's like six months from now. That's freaking insane. I mean, so just for the North America qualifier, this is the pro qualifier. These are the four games, Dota 2, uh, Crossfire, Hearth Heroes of the Storm, and Hearthstone. And you can see the prizing here. Heroes has more than Hearthstone, but this is a single-player game, so technically Heroes is the lowest-paying <laughs> game. But all things considered, how young this game is, you sh no one should yeah. be surprised about that. Yeah, the fact that it's even on that Right, the fact that it's list. even part of this is huge. Yeah. But you can the read this. pool for third, fourth is bigger than any first-place payout we've had yet. Period, in North America. For third, fourth. Period, yeah. yeah that's, that's freaking... It's awesome. Oh, that's so sick. So well, the it, total it, amount right. is... Like more than any all NA events combined. Yes. That, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. That yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, trips. <laughs> so the winning team gets a trip to the finals, which the prize pool will be. I, we don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be significantly larger. They get a trip to the finals. There is also going to be an open finals at PAX Prime. So there's going to be an open qualifier after this. Second place will automatically be part <laughs> of that that oh, the, uh, the open finals at PAX Prime. They get a flight, and and hotels, everything, all expenses paid to PAX. It, that's that's huge for both of them, but uh, the invitation there is over 1.9 million in cash and prizes. 1.9 billion. That's between four four events, right? But that's still disgustingly large numbers of money. Yeah. Even if we got like a 19th of that prize pool for here, it's like <laughs> that would be sick. That would be. That would be sick. Like, oh, it's such a hype event, and it's happening in beta, guys. We're, we're, we're in beta. And For a few more weeks. Yeah. It's yeah. sick. This kind of money is like... I know people on the Legends are like, 19k. That's like a gopher for us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but this is... Right. We're heroes, hey, man. considering how young our game is and what the viewership is like and the fact that there are this many parties interested just is, is a testament to the potential of this game. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, did you see all the pictures of uh, China's esports events for Heroes of the Storm already? It's like basically Gum TV style yeah. studios. Yeah, they they're they're huge and they're probably they, better than the rest of the world. And and we're gonna find out right now that Jake's got like, gonna, like videos. We're gonna go um, down this. Well, <laughs> I, I hit my treasure grove on China stuff, but I'm not releasing. <laughs> I need it for myself. Oh, I got a guy that. 
He's got the replays, you know. I got a guy. If you guys, you guys, this need... guy doesn't exist. No, he does. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I'll email. You him have tonight. been saying for the last six months that you have replays from hey. across the world. Hey. No one has seen any of them. I don't. I'm. And I don't think this exists. Pretty Remind much guys me. By now, most I just of them, shoot him an email. I used to send him all the kings replays for them because yeah, well, we were ahead of them. I used to shoot many, him all the kings of the sort replays. How many of the Titan Arena champions are China or Chinese? None. So. <laughs> How many yep. get wrecked, That's China. what matters here. Get, That's get wrecked, really what matters. Great, great. Get, how many Europeans have won Titan Arena? Get wrecked, Europe. Get out of here. Yeah. Scrubs. Yes. MLG, Thanks, no scrubs. Zoya. You heard it here. <laughs> so, I guess the final points to make is this is all happening next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's going to be, be on twitch.tv slash WCA underscore America. Monday starts out with, with Vortex versus Tuark, followed by Maelstrom versus Stellar Lotus. So, Iacona, you guys got Maelstrom, and I'm sure you guys are researching all of their all of their VODs, all of their replays, and prepping for that. <coughs> like, it's that, that's got to be the team's life right now, right? Yeah, like, we win one game, we get $2,000 minimum, guaranteed. Like, this is yeah, huge. Win, yeah, win two games. <laughs> one best hey, one match. You should watch oh, okay, one, one set. One match, yeah. You should watch Town Hall episode 61, where we discussed if you had to go against Cena Maelstrom in two weeks, <laughs> what you should do. And I think we decided that you need to get a surface, send it off into space, <laughs> and hope that aliens come and play heroes for you. Clearly Town Hall Heroes that. brought to you by... Oh my Thanks goodness. for the support, Kevin. <laughs> if we want this to get like real... Like non PG very fast. Let's go down that conversation again. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving through the bracket. Well, well let's let's go let, let's go back. To, well, yeah, let's finish the bracket, then we'll do the day. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I kind of like. What do you guys do? Like, can you tell us what your like practice routine is like as you prep for a match like that? We uh, basically you got to research. You got to look at all the recent um, matches that we like. We actually played um, Maelstrom. Or we're going to be playing them for um, ESL, or I guess, I don't know, we played them offline, but they haven't been cast yet, but we actually just played them the other day. And we actually, we also hit them like four or five times in Hero League the other night, so we've actually played them like tons of times recently and have a lot of good material that we can go off of. Oh, that's great. Not, not to mention all the other kind of recent showings that they've had as well, so there's a lot of material out there um, that we can uh, watch and uh, study, study up on. Yeah. So yeah, we've we've been having actually some really great experiences playing them past few days, which is all like sure like ESL matches we'd like to win win them overall, but even if we lose them, it's still really good practice just for this WCA, which is a lot more important than yeah. one week of sure. ESL games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even if you manage to win, like go undefeated in ESL and win the whole thing, you still get more money for WCA by a long shot. So. Definitely yep. a lot on the line for that. But let's just continue pushing through the bracket quickly. So day one, that's the two matches. Day two, that's next Tuesday. It's Cognitive versus Tempo Storm. And then Zevron and Complexity. And Jared, you guys have to be relatively familiar with Cognitive. You guys have played Shot in the Bullets already. Yeah. You guys have been prepping for that, I assume? Yeah, like so normally, like for normal events like Titan Arena and Kings of the Storm and stuff, we would avoid scrimming like Maelstrom and stuff like a day or two before that. But the moment the bracket was released... Like, we're pretty frequent scrim, scrim partners with Cognitive, and we were kind of for scrimming Zevron. This is the first time we've straight up just denied scrims to either of us, and we're only scrimming the teams on the opposite side of the bracket. Like, we are going super ham at preparing for this. Like, we were scrimming Cognitive, like, two to three times a week, and now it's just, like, sorry, until after, until after WCA, we are, like, I know we're all buddy-buddy right now, but... No, sorry. Like, we're taking it super seriously, and we're preparing hard for them. I like it. You got to respect that. Well, um, after all of that is said and done from day one and day two, we will have four teams advancing <coughs> to the semifinals, and that will all play out on the 13th. So we just have two semifinals. All of these are best of three series, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific. So 8 p.m. Eastern, roughly three to four hours each night worth of games. Very similar to what we already have for the ESL majors. And then 
the teams that get first and second place will be flown out to the ESL Burbank studio to compete live in the studio. I don't know if there's an audience, but I can tell you this much. The atmosphere, the production, it's going to be hype. This is the first time players will be meeting to compete live outside of what we had at BlizzCon. And, of course, the PGL that was hosted at DreamHack, but that was EU only. Let's, let's double back real quick because there's something that's good that potentially it's like not 100 percent but could be really interesting about this wca tournament is the patch patch could hit yeah. the day the tournament matches are played oh well, the, the well, for second two, day well, for, so, for, so, for so, us, so monday for monday the first uh, vortex two arc and then stellar lotus and maelstrom they're like they're almost guaranteed to be playing on the current patch and that's the only reason why i suggest that the patch could come out tomorrow don't know if Blizzard actually cares, but you never know, right? I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of logistics that if the schedule's yeah. set, it's it's done. But if the patch does hit Tuesday, that's so hard. Like, yeah. zero time to practice? Kael'thas wouldn't be allowed, of course, if, you know, he's thrown into the mix on, on the day of. I don't think he would be allowed. I'm not making yeah. an official <laughs> announcement on that. Still, regardless, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have a huge amount of balance Thanks. changes. Yeah. To all the heroes, and there's no they, getting around that. Like Diablo and ETC now getting things <laughs> right. that don't make any sense. That's just the tip of the iceberg. They said there's and a Abathur lot of changes coming in this getting the nerf patch. bat and stuff. Like yep. it's just. And who knows? There could be like unwanted bugs that show up to that. Unwanted completely like an Uber wreck. <laughs> Stealth. Uh, just... I get it. No, don't. Don't acknowledge no. it. Just like <laughs> shake your head and move on. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's gonna make things very interesting. I just I, I feel for the players having to. You know, adapt immediately. When I say immediately, that is like the truest sense of the word. Because well, that's you know, the thing, the, though. Typically, the patches will be finished what noon to two o'clock Eastern time. So that's like we're getting it real close to, you know, we're going to be going live. You have to more or less theory craft strategies and how these changes will affect how your team plays, how it's going to affect the team you're playing against plays, <laughs> and what that's going to do for the meta, and all of this without actually getting a hands-on feel for the game. That's, That's the fun of it, though. Like, oh yeah, no, I'm really excited. The team it's gonna loses, make crazy. It's gonna make yeah. things absolutely insane. Unless a team loses to like a game-breaking bug out of nowhere, that's like, whoa! Clearly, that shouldn't be in the game. Like, the better team should win the game. Like, that's right. that's the fun of it. Like, you have to be able to adapt to the new stuff. So, like, mm -hmm. it's gonna show really cool stuff. Like, if we go way back to the Sky Temple patch, like a week after that, a week and a half. This team right here, Sky or uh, the, the, the Stellar Lotus, <laughs> beat Tempo Storm in a Go for Heroes by busting out something crazy, new, and innovative on the new map, Sky Temple. That was Wildfire at the time, right? That was yes. Wildfire at the time. That was yes. Wildfire. So being able to be able to adjust quickly to a new patch and like innovate like that, especially for something like that, it's going to be really cool to see what teams can come up and like. A split moment. See, in the Smash community, this would be called pre-Johns. They're just throwing it out there that in case they lose, it's strictly because I of just this. said the better team should still win. <laughs> well, okay. It's a, okay. It's a best of three this time, so, you know, a gimmick on Sky Temple won't win this time. Oh! Interesting if oh, hey. <laughs> oh. All right. Just let that, let that soak in, boys. Mm. Mm. It's going to be like bit. a marinated beef. <laughs> It would be okay, interesting, think... though, if there is a patch, if any of the teams will invest in kind of getting a data miner that will actually mine the patch notes ahead of time and, like, send it off to them. Because I know, like, Ali's been doing a lot of that work where he finds, like, undocumented changes and some <coughs> early stuff. And it should be interesting if any of the teams actually, like, kind of do that on their own and try to get an edge of the of the other teams. Yeah, like, at, like, at that point, yeah. when you're just going off information, you got to get all the edges possible, assuming it's within reason and legal, of course, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's certainly a possibility. It, it, it's stuff like that, like, and there's it, it's it's just the timing of it's all like in general we would not want the patch to be on the biggest <laughs> tournament to date for heroes, but um, you would, it could I would, I think well. it'd be hilarious <laughs> to watch. No, it's gonna be pretty awesome from a spectator perspective. I'm excited <laughs> about it from a casting perspective. I just feel bad for the players. Yeah, not but, awesome. The other no, side. not at all. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. So fun. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> just see everybody just kind of like thrown into the pit, like figure it out. We'll just yell at you about it. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. So we can continue with esports discussion moving on from WCA. Just final reminder that is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, 5 p.m. Pacific start time. Esports recap, boys. We got a lot happening over the last few weeks. 
we've had last night in particular really stood out to me as some pretty darn good games. <laughs> Jared, I know you have things to say about yeah, let's just the like, games. Let's go ahead and poop all over Tempo Storms right now, now, because <laughs> holy you, crap! You have the soapbox, sir. So game one, uh, Sky Temple. Uh, we are running a double support, triple support, technically with Illidan yep. comp. Uh, people need like in chat like didn't realize is Illidan is not a hero that's powerful in the early game. He scales up super hard late game when he gets metamorphosis and his talents. And of course, double support's not going to be powerful in the early game. So we had a rough start at the early game, but once we hit a certain level, we had complete control of the game. We were not losing team fights because of the double support power. We were snowballing it in our favor, and the game got to a point where it felt unlosable. Unless we throw throw out a boss, <clears throat> and then Arthalon's like, "Hey, let's do boss." And this is something that we've like talked about several times. If someone says the words, "Should we be doing this right now?" and it concerns a boss, just leave. <laughs> I, heard, I heard I heard Dreadnought say twice, "Should we be doing this, guys? Should we be doing this, guys?" Yeah, it's fine. What happened, Kubi? What happened? What happened? Sec like what happened with that boss? Because. I don't think we should have been doing it. It was rough. There was ETC involved. There was some dancing. Don't see a boss. This this isn't that exact moment. But there was some. I think there was some wailing arrow. I can get to that well, exact moment. I just need. Right time. wing died really fast. Really yeah. fast. Illidan was in the dance. That got eliminated pretty quick. Yeah, it didn't go so well after that. With the the boss pushing down in the bottom lane, and I think you guys or uh, Complexity picked up a couple kills during the yeah. defense. Yeah, that game ended within a minute afterwards <laughs> when you guys had a 21 to 19 advantage uh, going uh, onto the boss. So, yeah, like, that's rough. Those are, you hate to see that kind of thing happen. It did. Yeah, it was really bad. Like, really, really bad. It's. I was angry. <laughs> and, and the players were angry. That's not something you should. Like, even Jake said it in the cast, like, it's called the throw pit for a reason. That, like yep. that was the only way to lose at that moment, was to and it was an unnecessary risk that was taken and cost you guys the game. Yeah, fight the match. Yeah, it, it, just, yeah it was it was the worst thing. So that game happened. You could argue it, something similar happened game two, but the reverse. Well, not well. Not, not as I don't much, think. But I don't think either team threw that game. I think it was crazy, nonetheless. The, the thing about Abathur is. He never gets a good showing in tournaments. In scrims, he's insane. Like, both us and Maelstrom have been running him lately, yeah. and he gets great value. But every time in ESL, it's just like, why are they picking Abathur? He's got a 0% win rate. Finally, <laughs> one team finally got a win with Abathur in NA last night. But uh, Complexity uh, picked us apart the early game, and then... Yes. They looked very strong uh, going into the, the late game, and then... It kind of looked like the positioning was really off at the very last push that you guys that I remember Complexity was going to try to take the boss. This is, of course, on Curse Hollow. Uh, Complexity was trying to take the boss in the left corner. I think that they had already taken the boss in the upper right. Yeah, I'm actually going to try to pull it up the show. And so then, then we saw Glaurung like dive in. And we're, I'm just throwing my hands up like I'm observing. I threw my hands up and I'm just like, what is going on right now? Like, what is he doing? <laughs> he just dived in and he, he was eliminated immediately. He had souls, of course. And we're just like, the team fight just looks so weird. We were, me and Jake were like trying to wrap we, our heads we around. Thought, we like, we thought, what's going on? Yeah, like, we actually thought Tempo had given up. Like it literally, Glaurung went and died. He had souls. And then Jaina went in, almost died. Ultimate evolution was used literally to die. And, and by time, and it, it was all just salt tactics. It was yeah. salt tactics because Abathur push was real. It was two things. Like we played like poo, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> try to stay PG here, boys. And <laughs> we played, and and the composition was a little bit off for an Abathur comp, but we shouldn't have had the Diablo then, and we should have played it a bit differently. Um, but we we drafted the composition wrong, despite drafting it a million times by now. Um, and complexity played the early to mid game really, really well. Um, you brought up how it kind of was a throw. They did kind of like their late game was a bit sloppy there, um, but I don't think it was like a stomp either way that game. 
it was just both teams not playing to their to their normals. I'm sure Complexity was very surprised by what happened. We were caught off guard by that as well. Like we're just like Jake. I just see Jake's like hands like like going like this across the desk. I'm like, what is he doing? And then I look over. I'm like, oh my god, the car. And you guys didn't notice the tool's like nine percent HP. Yeah, it was like really low. We're just like, whoa, okay. And like, obviously, man, Complexity like... was still like in that spot too. So it was just like, okay, all right, game's over. Abathur push. I and mean, we were doing a good job like highlighting like what Abathur's doing, dancing around across the map. I gotta say that part of the play was very much on point. He wasn't ganked or picked off, and he was if getting Abathur's a good push. If played properly, he yeah. can out-soak Vikings 100% of the time. Yeah, we, we noticed that, too. Uh, was that <laughs> third third game? No. He was forcing the position of Vikings game constantly, game too. He was ca constantly forced the Vikings to defend, constantly forced Falstead to fly down. He, well, the, the Abathur play in general, like, across the game, he negated curses. He just kept, kept lanes pushed. He, then they got like two curses before we even got. He got they got three. They got, got three, three before you got any curse. <laughs> they got an insane. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, was, it was it was nine tributes to two. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, by the end of yeah. the game. Yeah, that sounds about right. Abathur's really good at negating pushes and, and curses and stuff. So he's just uh, really good on that map. And maps like Guardian stuff like the really big ones. And uh, we just like drafted run. Right? Like you said, there were a lot of misplays. Um, but luckily, we got the win. And then game three, complexity drafted Arthas. I don't think we need to talk about that game. Um. Yeah, Arthas um, didn't, didn't work uh, out. Like, I don't know. I th I, I, don't, I think. Yeah, I, I thought Arthas was a weird. Like, pick. it didn't pay off. I think we're a better team. Like, I'm obviously I'm gonna say I think we're a better team than Complexity, but we have like a three and a half level lead at one point. I don't yeah, think that should happen lead. versus Complexity. Like, they're not a bad team. Of course, I'm gonna say I think we're better, but it's not like they're a quite good. Yeah, I mean, they were one of the four teams in playoffs last season for a reason, right? They were undefeated in season one for a reason. No they're way. Really roster, even with the roster changes, they're still a good team, and I don't think like even like you know if I'm gonna hype up my team as much, I don't think it should have been uh, like if you're talking about those two good teams going against each other, it should not be that one sided either way. No. Complexity like choked in the draft or something. I don't understand that Arthas pick at all, and at one point it was like a three and a half level lead. It was like it just that they choked. Cool. Double that, double tank too, right? Yeah, it was double tank. I, were we predicting Kerrigan? And I think Kerrigan was on the table as well. We're like, all right, I think we had like already just yeah, decided that it was going to be Kerrigan. And, and the, like, yeah, oh, Arthas. Had, okay. Their comp, <laughs> their comp was they drafted. Uh, they were second pick, first rotation. They went Jana yeah. Sylvanas, then they went Mouth Muradin, and then they last picked Arthas. And this was on Garden of Terror. Yeah. I mean, I. A no. lot of lockdown for Jana to just go to town. I guess, but <laughs> the thing is, the thing with Arthas is like the enemy team has to either be drastically slowed down for Arthas to even get in there, or the enemy team has to be like this ridiculous hard engage team. And you guys had Illidan, but it still didn't really make enough we sense. We had a super hard engage. We had Illidan, ETC, Brightwing. So yeah. suddenly there's like three yeah. people in their back line. But yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. No. It does no, it was like they they lost the game in that draft. Unless they know something I know don't know about Arthas. Sure. Well right. apparently well, do they know Apparently it? they didn't lose the game in yeah. the draft. <laughs> I don't know. Uh interesting interesting ideas. And you know, I, I got pretty happy to see the Arthas, but I was just like, I don't know if this is gonna work out. But I seen him drafted in the EU and actually do pretty well. Did they right. Um, I forget. EU Arthas e, Arthas does well in EU because the rest of EU is bad. That's the only reason it does well. In. It wouldn't succeed against a good team. So. You sure oh, you cool. want to say that? <laughs> you sure you want to say that, Zoya? Yeah, I'm positive. <laughs> Arthas is okay. Arthas yeah. has like a right? surprise factor to him. That's well, like our, 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 only they, way. Complexity Ooh. ran Arthas in game one of the very first series. ESL, of ESL playoffs, Major League playoffs, playoffs versus, versus Maelstrom. Maelstrom. And Maelstrom. And that was the only winner Maelstrom. Yeah, that was the only winner Maelstrom. Think that was the only game they won yeah. they did pick Ma Ma Arthas. So that, possibly. I don't think that, he's received any changes since then, has he? No. no. Zero changes. That's why I said the surprise factor. They caught Maelstrom off guard. Yeah. No. Well, interesting. Well, Yakota. Thoughts yes. on the series? Anything jump out at you in particular? Did you manage to catch it? Yes, that's a good question. Stars. I was actually uh, playing. Okay. <laughs> playing my own Oh, you had, to, you had to do the makeup. You had to do the yeah, makeup. Yeah, do the game. Oh, yeah. We were Maelstrom. playing Maelstrom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. I didn't know you guys were playing like simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah right after then. Maelstrom finished their series, we were. That's right. And I did. Okay. Them. Fair enough. 
So I'm actually nearly at the point in the replay. It takes forever <laughs> to, to, to fast forward through a 27 minute game. It actually just takes forever. Uh, we're almost there. I do really want to take a look at this just to show it. Um, but I guess the final thoughts on the whole thing, and just to kind of, this is one of the big points that we're going to make with the replay, is the fact that in the past we've seen a lot of changes to Abathur, right? We've seen Abathur be completely about split pushing, and then we've seen Abathur become kind of useless in a patch, and then now we kind of have this this version of Abathur where people get the Locust and they outrange the keeps. Let's actually let Kubi drive. Going to set it to his observing mode. Oh, that's it. He's thriving now. This is Kubi's observing from last night, and we can just see what's happening. So this is the end of the game pretty much. Very towards late game. 27 minutes in, and this is kind of a weird fight. I mean, we just see them walk in. It's, this isn't the right fight at all, I don't think. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, it is. Is it? That's the one. Where yeah, they just kind of walked in? Yeah. So yeah, we missed the start. We this, missed the start of it. Oh. We missed the start of it. That's why. Is that the final fight right before the win? Yeah, I think that was. Yeah. At, at one point, it comes to the point where we're screaming to don't let them go back because we're aware of what Abathur is doing. We're like right. delay their backs, even if we have to die for it. Do not let them God go back. God knows where Kubi's obs is going right now. Oops. I think I think it might be broke. <laughs> it broke I love it. that Pokemon. It broke it. Oops. Oh, okay. So this oh. is boss. They started it. They they back up from it, and Tempo Storm is walking it. And this is a play that we just kind of looked at. It's just like I think Glowering already jumped in, didn't he? No, he didn't. Okay. He still has souls. He still has souls. Yeah. 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 I thought it was different. This is probably the worst thing the I've ever shown. <coughs> this is really not that hype, but yeah. Yeah. So Woo! yeah. This is. I don't think <laughs> this is it. This isn't That's the final fight. No, it's not. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. I am. Okay. Worst show, N.A. They push in. They push in. Guys, sorry. Oh, this is tragic. Bam. This is the Rooney's. All right, Rooney's. so here, here, this is it. This is it for This real. is the final fight. This yes. is the final fight. So Glaring just walks in by himself with, with Jaina, right? This is just, like, so not like Tempest Storm. Kubi and I are just like, what is actually happening? Of course he's going to die, but he's got souls, so he'll respawn pretty quickly. Jaina, Brightwing hanging around. How, they're not gonna, they can't take this boss. It's all worth thinking about. But during all of this, there is actually Abathur, and he just summoned that group of Locusts, and he's just hearthing home to be safe. Last Locust comes in, so that's happening. Abathur's happy back in base. This fight is still happening, though. I mean, they've only lost Diablo, who had souls. Jaina, that's, that's the Abathur clone this time. He used that as soon as he got back to base. Arthalon getting low, so the clone has been used, and they're still... It's like, it's like how are they... What are they doing? But they're actually managing to do a pretty good job in this fight. But really what matters is the time they're buying. Right now, the Locust now finally reaching that core, chipping away at those shields, doing a nice job, but they're actually taking the fight back, which was a really rough start, just kind of showing how powerful that Diablo ability can be. And, but even if they lose this fight, it doesn't it doesn't matter because Abathur's back down here. That, that Look at the talent, gone. Too, Jake, for Diablo. More, more, uh, more Locust going in. <coughs> and yeah, Jared, why don't you talk a little bit more about the mentality in the match right now? Uh, at this point, it's just like, delay, delay, delay. Do not let them go back because soldiers like, guys, I'm on the core. I'm on the core. I'm doing as much as I can. Do not let anyone go back um, to, to clear the Locust because right now it's kind of like, uh scary. Like, th this match was actually very tense despite how, like, sloppy it was played. So, like, we're, and at this point, it's like, 3%, no, no. Uh, but then the Locusts end up. Yeah. Being, uh, so, wait, what was, what was it about the talents of Diablo? Uh, except for spells. He went with Devil's, oh, Devil's Dew. Dude, I've been saying Devil's Dew lately. And everybody's like, well, you shouldn't be dying. And I'm like, oh, Devil's Dew is so good. It worked out for him because Glaurung was really reckless, but it didn't matter. It, like, didn't matter. He would go into fights. You can and thank he... Mr. Like, they give credit where credit's due. You can get, thank Mr. Curse Fairy for that from Zevron. He's the one that brought it to the yep. competitive scene. Just because you say dumb shit, Kevin, doesn't mean we're going to do it. We need a pro to pull it off first. You've been saying Diablo for like six months. Oh, God. But you know gonna, so I, I don't need this. Let's, let's wrap it up really quick. And uh, Abathur is losing the ability to do that. Um, it, they, Tempo got the last cheese win with it. It's gone now. Yep, cheese Abathur win. will not be played again. We might play him this weekend in Colossus, but... Colossus. Colossus? Colossus. Very good. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I'm, I'm. Well, there's also the possibility that Abathur gets that win tomorrow. I didn't or, think you know, could do this, even until the patch. I'm does anybody that. else? Does it bother anybody else that the red team wins thing is so small and just like at the bottom half of that 
little circle thingy logo. Are we looking at different things? Are looking at like the CSS kind of not being pixel perfect? Yeah. Wrecked. Listen to this guy. Where it's like his, like text speak. Cause like if you look like the the horizontal lines and then the text is like kind of below the horizontal. So it's yeah, like that's what I mean. Point. It's not lined with the rest of this stuff. Not pixel perfect. It's not even remotely pixel perfect. That's what I'm <laughs> complaining about. The fact that it's just like here's where it should be and here's where it is, like right below it, it bothers me. And now that you pointed it out, it's gonna start bothering me for the rest of my life. Thank uh, you. Rip. Yeah, you're welcome. Rip. There you go. Just not be weird and don't care. Like. <laughs> no, that is unacceptable. Anyway, um, esports well, meta. Do we want to talk about the Maelstrom versus two arc matches? Sure. I mean, I didn't see those. Really, really close series. Two arc is currently. Yeah. If we look at the standings, two arc is currently uh, number two, and it's for a good reason. They're the first team to actually even take a game off Maelstrom at this point in time. And they did it in convincing fashion with some actually really interesting builds. Yeah, they ran Kerrigan twice. They, they ran Chen, actually, the last game. I was all about the Chen play, but why Panda Pals? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. No. So, like, about, like, two months ago, I was talking to Soldier once, and I was like, so why don't we just try out Panda Pals just once? He's like, no, you're the dumbest person I've ever met. And that was... That's how bad Panda Pals is. Just uh, had, I thought I would so we theory crafting about no like during sense. the draft and we're like, okay, they're gonna use the barrel to split the team up to get like a lot of value for Kerrigan. They can zone out Illid and they can zone up Brightwing. There's a lot of options for them. And then they go Panda Pals and it's like kind of working and then the Divine Shields were like before the Panda Pals. Why was, like, was he casting it on Shen at all? Why know. would you waste Divine Shield? Put it on your oh. damage. Let them play more aggressive. Like, no! Two Arc played really well you, in the first two games. No. i got to give them credit for that, but I, I, I like the Chen pick. I did. I just, I, I would love to pick their brains they about why they went Panda Pals. They, they did. Were, it was, they were playing so well. They were. They were. How hilarious would it be if you cast Divine Shield on Chen as he's about to pop into Panda Pals, and then you have three Divine Shield It Panda still wouldn't that's, matter. That's, that's, that's what happens. You cast Divine Shield on Chen, and it ends up on only one of the Panda Pals. That's what I mean. Well, how cool would it be if all three of them happened? It wouldn't change anything. It wouldn't, it wouldn't change really. anything because it's a bad heroic with cast I'm just on a bad heroic. Like, well, to be honest, Zoid, people used to say that about Divine Shield. Divine Shield's not bad. But... Like, back in early Alpha days. Yeah, where... well, that's when its time wasn't reduced. It's cooldown wasn't reduced. They got buffed before it became good. And then they got rid of, like, a lot of the usability of Divine Storm. Uh, yeah, come on. It's just not like nothing <laughs> happened to it. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. No. Yeah. Just because uh, someone thinks it's bad right now doesn't mean it's going to stay bad. Yeah, Diablo is the number one <laughs> example of that, I guess. Number one hero player, Kelly? Do you guys run Panda Pals? Ever. Stellar Lotus? No. Good, no. you might beat Maelstrom. <laughs> there's, there's, you gonna run some just... barrels? I played Chen for, I think, the second time last night. Awesome. And then okay. I realized why Great I stopped experience. playing Chen Guys, after the first time. Here's what they need to do. Oh, they no. need to run Cassadar, Chen. Is this a force wall? I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. Doesn't involve thrall. Tassadar, it's fourth wall. wall. Tassadar, Chen, wall. Chen, Tychus, Thrall, Rhaegar, Bloodlust Comp. Okay, this is when he's casting and he starts spewing this stuff. I do this. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? This, this, <laughs> the slide turn of the head. Turn I'm sorry. You guys can't see it. We're like in the middle of the draft screen. I'm just like, go ahead. Get your thought out. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why Jake is sitting there like Doctor No hey. with his little, <laughs> with with a little maybe cat. He's like um, Inspector Gadget. What's the guy's name? Somebody help me. Well, What's, that's what is the the villain in Inspector Gadget? Doctor Claw. Doctor Claw. Yes. I think it's just, I think it's just Claw. Oh come on! Don't do this to me. I think it's Doctor Claw. But it's well, that's in reference <laughs> to Doctor No, James Bond, bro. Ah, uh, fine, fine. Uther, so Uther I just Black. like so Tork's always been like the one of the more innovative teams. They always like it, Tork has never done the meta. They've always done two arc things. Well they're, they're, met. They're two arc because like that's just them. So I hope like in their scrims, they're just super successful with Panda Pals and they just goof that game because that is that, that would actually be a fun heroic to cut like to come back like in its in its state because before it was just gimmicky and stupid. 
Like, it's made Chen unstoppable, but in this state, it'd be, like, fun. So it'd I hope that like was just, fun. like, a foreshadowing showing for them, because, like, I want it to be a thing. But, I don't know, man. That game was just so bad. It was such a good series, too, up until that point. They had the, they were winning the early game, too. Yeah, they were up to, like, was, up to level 9, every, like, the, before the heroic. They had, like, a two-level lead at one point, and then yeah. it was just, like, oh, you picked that heroic. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I saw it. I was like, oh, mm. was that a misclick? Nope. Yeah. I just think the 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 number of times that Divine Shield was forced out to the point where it actually didn't give any flexibility in the fights. It was just used reactionarily <coughs> to save someone, and nothing. There was no advantage given ever with it. It was right, always because it, it just kind of seemed like they didn't have enough control over the positioning yeah. of the enemy team to feel comfortable to throw it on Kerrigan and get the Maelstrom value. And they needed barrel for that, so I was just so disappointed when they grabbed it. Yeah. Maybe maybe they know something about Panda Pals that we don't know. Maybe it was actually a misclick. It, like that's, maybe it was that's possible. Really a misclick worst too, misclick right? to date. Maybe yeah. uh, that's not I don't know. <laughs> it's been just as bad. There's been some really for, bad for mis- heroics or for talents misclick. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. There was the oh um. Kerrigan. Idra. Went Arthas once in like an ESL game, I think. That was a misclick. Like he went Cinder, like he went Arthas and went like back when Arthas was God tier, went Cinder Ghost on once or, but I think it was EG. This was I'm like ten sure. years ago. <laughs> I'm just bringing up other moments when misclick has happened. Okay? That was so, yeah. that was like Go for Heroes number three, like twenty weeks <laughs> ago. Still happened, man. Okay. Still happened. You said ever. Arthas has been out of when the meta. You say way ever, long. it's everything. Ever, ever happened. <laughs> I know one time we accidentally picked laser back when Odin was god tier, and no one played laser at all, and that was fun. It was like versus ED or something. Odin's always been god. So you still won that game, probably? He is a god. I can't remember. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, any okay. other thoughts from the series last night? No, I think we covered it. Smart. In, in- uh, don't take boss if you can throw with it. Dude, oh. like for real, man. <laughs> like I, I want people to like Hadouken. My, like no, that was just bad. Like just go out ham on it. Like that was the whole team. I was like amateur. Let's go play in the heroes hype. You know, bad teams tournament because that's where <laughs> we belong after that play. Like that's how bad that was. Um. Okay. You want a shovel with that? <laughs> No oh, man, like we're we're like I'm not letting that. I'm making sure everyone feels the shame of that throw because that was bad. That was a terrible. I just like how you shoot shots, fire at everyone. Like the hero hype bad team tournament. Like <laughs> I, I had like I had to put I had already said the word amateur, so I didn't want to repeat the word amateur. Oh, and I had to put God. emphasis on the fact that we're bad. So. I like oh I God. like the amateur tournament. Hero type's awesome. I just, I'm I'm trying to poop all over my team. All right, let me. <laughs> you're, but you're just breaking just everywhere. Just, you're just you are throwing you're it into the down. fan and it hits. Just let everybody. me dig my hole, okay? <laughs> and move but along. Don't dig it with anyone else in it. Oh. <laughs> he he could have dug it deeper. He could have used words like, "I love watching bad teams be bad," but you dropped the ball, Jared. Sorry. You dropped the ball. Next time. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's what we had happen. Now, typically, this is a point after the esports discussion we would talk a little bit about shifting in the meta, but considering we have a patch in the horizon, I don't think there's any (coughs) sense in talking about that kind of stuff because it's all going to be flipped on its head. But what we can talk about is the new abilities and things, the the patch notes leak that we have that have come out. Corey Link. Give you a link. Not a leak. Who doesn't have this one? Not oh, a leak. It they came from they the they show Battle.net blog. I don't know if it's. I'm hey, it up. Yeah, right. Oh, Corey, no, Blizzard's That's telling not... us information about their next patch. Somebody get on that leak. <laughs> yeah, patch. Corey, patch insights. Oh. I will link it to oh. to the Skype group, and I will link it to the wow. chat. Oh, this can be found if you guys are listening or watching the VOD. This can be found at heroesofthestorm.com in the news section as Thanks, Developer Jake. Insights Patch Preview 55 2015. Let us switch over to that screen. 
Look at that oh, beautiful yeah, man, Matthew Cooper. It says Trixler, but it's Matthew Cooper because Trick wrote and then slapped Matt's face on it. As he <laughs> <did>. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well done. Hero and Talent Reworks. Now, just running through this very quickly, basically they said they were, a while back we were told that Diablo was going to see a rework. Now, they d this is something that Kev was excited about. And then they just kind of went in and they tweaked the control. They made his control just feel better, more consistent. And suddenly Diablo's <laughs> god tier in terms of tanks. So they decide let's buff him. Well, <laughs> firstly, oh. let's let's take a step back here, Jake. Jake Boo. Jack Egg. Um, I was not excited for the rework because I was afraid that they were going to just take everything that I knew and loved about Diablo and just got rid of it. I was, I was, yeah. So... Number two, number two, it wasn't just fixing his abilities that brought him back into the meta. They took all the other warriors and just said, you don't do anything now. True. And then everybody realized how fun Diablo is. But, yeah, this is an interesting thing that they're doing. Well, I mean, there's a couple points before then, but let's talk about Diablo since I guess that's the target of ire here. Storm Shield replaced with a storm power called Lord of Terror... The ability will be an activated area of effect lifesteal that can hit multiple enemy heroes near Diablo. We want Diablo in the middle of team fights. Yo, this is this literally is like casting Storm Shield, but blood for blood. So you get around your enemy team and you just go... Just like Don't that. think so. I think not Storm Shield, because Storm Shield assists all your allies. This is just like, well, I think, just like AoE vamp. For Diablo yeah, himself. but in, in, in terms said, of the radius, in terms of the radius, it's an AOE blood for blood. In well, yeah, but no, but Storm Shield helps all your allies. Right, this just helps just, you. Yeah, it's more aggressive version of that. So it's you're... not Storm Shield at all. In terms of the radius, though. <laughs> yeah, everything's got a radius except for your yeah, skill shot. That very few abilities cast a massive radius around you. Like they they have a, that short range where it's just kind of like known. What that is your hits. definition of very few? <laughs> I'm so Not. glad this show doesn't have like a time constraint. Cause <laughs> <laughs> that is all irrelevant, anyways. Oh, okay. Okay, now it's irrelevant. Yeah, okay, I got you. <laughs> hey, talk about the one beforehand. Maybe the the healing ward. That's kind of a thing. Yeah. Well, let's really. just do the tanks. Know. We're on that point. Hey, we're all on right. Diablo right now. Cause... No, we'll let's talk about the Diablo because we're already. Uh, no, he said that's irrelevant. We no, said the, the number of the storm, like, shield, the storm shield, shield thing is irrelevant. God. Oh. But this is quite cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is okay. quite cool, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess. I don't think it will ever... I, it depends on numbers, but... I, bolt? <laughs> if, but, if it's less than, like, a storm bolt? shield, I don't think it's going to be picked. Like, if you gain, like, less than 20% of your max health... Yeah. Yeah. How many, like... It'd be, like, worse than a storm shield. Diablo is, like, the one warrior that... Kim and Tyrael, they always end up in the middle of a team for point contentions, whether it's trying to contest a boss cap or going for a shrine on Sky Temple. He is always finding himself in the middle of a large group of people. So if, it, if that type of ability is going to work on any hero, it'll be Diablo. Like There's so many times where Diablo is just surrounded by people. The numbers will have to be something like pretty decent for it to be good, but... I want, like I wonder if like what would be big is if you could use that ability while wow. casting lightning breath. Yes. If you could do that in combination with lightning breath, that that would be sick. He doesn't even need really ancestral good. anymore. Now I, I want to just make the the direct comparison to some other level twenty talents that we've <clears throat> recently had added to the game because it seems like Blizzard is trying to add a lot of these level twenty talents that almost feel like a second heroic right they're they're themed around that hero they have a massive impact that only makes sense for that hero redemption on uther is huge it's actually just insanely powerful insane how strong it is in theory epic flight only makes sense for falstad in a lot of situations it gives him ridiculous amounts of mobility it's a very powerful talent that if you can give up the extra damage very cool to have on that hero I would be shocked if this wasn't scaled in a similar <laughs> manner to the sense of redemption. Um, no, the funny thing uh, about redemption is, though, it's clearly good um, if you're the team that's winning. There, there's a real big drawback to redemption. Yeah. That's which, good game design, though. I mean, that's great game design, which is uh, that was kind of like really <laughs> off topic there, but 
they, they, that was a really well designed heroic. And if they're if they're or not heroic talent, and if they're uh, willing to, if their like goal is to emulate that as many, as much as they can across like every individual hero, have their own. Because Abathur's got them now. You got uh, yeah. Aether, Diablo and ETC now getting Jaina their weird has things. Yeah, Jaina has one. You know, like they're all pretty good. Jaina one's kind of boring, but well. They said Lily's other mages one. could get that. I don't think that's... Yeah, Lily's got yeah, one, Lily. 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 That's an E-I-E-I, Lily. E-I, Kona. Lily. Lily. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. So um, let me ask you guys, before yeah. we move on from the Diablo, what, how much health is too much if you hit all five? What, what, is, what, what kind of tweaked field of numbers are we looking at here? What's too little? <laughs> what's too much? I think if you hit five, it should be like 60% of your health. I think it'll be ten percent per hero. If it, it does to... damage, it, it's gonna it be it's gonna be, be life insane. Steal. It's gonna be life if, it, if it's actually Should... taking health from people and giving it to you, there's no way it could be like anything more than like twenty percent, and even twenty percent. Well, it's ten percent per hero. It's per hero. Does it give you all the health it stole, or does it give you like fifty percent or we'll something? We'll make the assumption that. Was it there an actual number? No, no, we don't have We have no numbers. No nothing. We have no idea how this works. could be. It could be a channel. It could be an instant cast. It could be a delay. like uh, an aura. Like, there's no way it can't. It can't be like even if you hit all five people. If it's anything more than like thirty percent, that is insane. Oh, Storm shields twenty yeah, percent. Like yeah. for self healing. And people around you. So how yeah. does that work? But it's like if it's less. But than it's Storm also shield. doing damage though. It's not right. just. So you said no more yourself. than thirty percent. No so more if than thirty percent. All five people, then we're looking at something like less than obviously 6% like that ten percent, yeah, six point two five percent per person. Like that's not that much damage. Feeding, of course. It's just like, six. Yeah, that's that's, that's fine. Yeah. Though. Like, yeah, yeah. It can't do like it can't. It, if it does good damage, it can't make that equal in life gain. That's not good right? damage. Like it, no, I'm saying if it does end up doing like ten to twenty percent damage per hero. Then it can't restore that much to. <laughs> I no, think God, no. no way. No, no, no. It can't no. be as free ancestral. But can it? If you hit five <laughs> targets, that's not that hard though. Well, yeah, I, that's I... three hundred and seventy-five damage per target though. That's a flame stop. That's less than a flame stop. That's what fire. heroes are around you. There's a, yeah, there's a million fireworks. Yeah, but it's if it does that's... damage and heals. It, the I numbers think if it, can't be insane. I think There's if it no takes ten percent for for everybody, takes ten percent of their HP away and gives it to Diablo, I don't think. Yo, that's blood right. for blood, oh. AOE blood for blood. <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> How is that ridiculous? Perfect. You're not you dealing fifty percent damage a to good every hero. Diablo. You're dealing ten percent damage to every yes, hero. Yes, it's the heal though. That's also insane. Like if you're if you're, a good Diablo should be able to hit three to four people every time. Unless the other team is just like staying as spread out and as I possible. Get you, but and like also Arrow's giving there. up his other twenty abilities. To do this, it's probably he doesn't an get this cast. hand storm. He doesn't get this and hellstorm. He gets yeah, well, level twenty su- talent suck anyway. Who cares? Why hellstorm? Hellstorm is Bolt phenomenal. And hellstorm and storm shield, yeah, bolting across and shadow charging from. Ugh, it's so sick. Well, you bolt all powers and stuff. Yeah, but yeah what? It can't do. It can't do insane damage and heal for the same amount. That's it's insane. not doing insane damage. What it's doing ten twenty talent? So Moving on to, to ETC Elite Torrent Chieftain. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're just yelling. I like yelling. <laughs> Let's talk. We're, we're getting yelling. things we were, done. We were well, raising so our thing. voices, Mom. Here's the thing. We know even less about how this catastrophe is going to work. Well, uh, no, this one's actually less. more it straightforward. Is. This is much more straightforward. Um, basically, simple. no matter what you take for your heroic at 10, you have a talent that is available at level 20 called Death Metal, which when ETC dies, he becomes <coughs> a ghost in which he will unleash an uninterrup- uninterruptible mosh pit. So as he dies, he basically does mosh pit. I envision ETC rising to the go- rising to the skies like a rock god. So he's actually just kind of going up, playing his guitar, and everything around him is in- inflicted with the dance. And I assume it will persist for maybe three to four minutes. Three to four three minutes. minutes. Three to four minutes. <laughs> three to four minutes. <laughs> Give her You don't res during this time. It's You're a just, long that's song. Part of the map that no one can go to. It's just like it's, just, it's ETC. He's like our weird cousin. Yeah. You just let him do his thing. Just... <laughs> Eventually, you would want that to end so you can revive and come back to the fight. Like, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like the heavenly. What the hell's going on in three to four minutes? 
If I could delete like three people for four minutes, I think I would take <laughs> no like, response. That's actually not. There's there's like a like, if you whiff the death ult, you're just dancing for three to four minutes. But if you land at least one person, <laughs> that person can't enjoy the game anymore for three to four minutes. So this is like the ultimate troll ability for like and pissing people claim. off in quick match. There's like. a level 25 talent that lets you upgrade it and it plays green at gra <laughs> green grass and high tides <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> and the next person caught in it so is stuck for 15 minutes. Here's the ultimate minutes. plan then. You, you can use this with stage dive. So you stage dive to right in front of their um, altar of storms or whatever, and then just die to the core, and now they have an impassable area for three to four minutes, and they can't leave. Great. So G what you do G G is you have your, your, your ETC split pushing, <laughs> and like he goes and starts boss by himself, and just waits till his last hit. Your teams are dancing on the edge of a, a fight, and as he's about to die, you stage dive in, and suddenly you got like a, you know, a mosh pit for the duration of I Am Murloc. It's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Yay. I think the what do we know about this, Jake? <laughs> the uninterruptible part, I think, is the biggest thing that yep. makes it plus. That's the main drawback for Mosh Pit is someone could just stun you out of it. Yep. But if you can't, then the only thing that's good for it is cleanse or find shield or something they like that. They should make it to where, like, you can stun your ETC out of it so he doesn't have to wait three minutes before he's back in the fight. <laughs> like allied stuns and stuff. So we've so, seen the return of Haymaker? We have very seen it. specific uh, notation that they use when they're describing this is that it casts an uninterruptible mosh pit. So it's not like a version of mosh pit, at least the way they worded it. So we can assume that it is four seconds. Yes. Right now, based on what if, it says. If. If. Even but, if it goes off instantly. So like say it doesn't have a wind up like normal mosh pit. I assume it even does. If it goes off, it does. Even if it goes off. In, like, so let's just say it does go off instantly. I still don't know if it'll be better than Bolt. Yeah. Just because once you're aware that talent is available, don't die near ETC. Don't, don't be near ETC when you, you do You have it. to think of everything's in the grand scheme of things, though. Like, this is an option in XYZ. Based on certain compositions, certain teams, certain maps, it could end up being a phenomenal option because you know that if you die in this choke point <laughs> on this map, it can net you this. Like, in the grand scheme of things, as the game evolves, this is going to see a ridiculous implication. Some team's going to find... Like, whether or not we see it like to be the most impactful thing in competitive right away is irrelevant. But the fact that it's a really cool talent that does have a lot of potential, we're going to see epic plays with it down the road at some point, guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so... Okay, I like this comment in chat, actually. Uh, yeah. Credit to Calamity Charlie. He says, both these talents are designed to be anti-Blood for Blood. It, it, so, let's just take that idea, because we can all agree Blood for Blood is an insane talent. Probably the best talent. It's between that and Bolt, the strongest talent in the game. It's ridiculous. If you, you, you have a comp with fortified Blood for Bloods, you can annihilate any hero in seconds. So, if let's just say the idea of these talents are designed to be anti blood for blood, if you have to design a talent to be anti X talent, delete X talent. Remove blood for blood <laughs> from the game. You, it. you don't. You shouldn't be designed. Like, the fact that people are saying it's designed to be anti blood for blood. No, that's. Oh, like They is. would just remove blood for blood. That's not the reason why it's like. Sure, th these are like some form of awkward counterplay for blood for blood. But no, they were not designed as anti blood. Because for blood. because even if you take, I mean, the only reason you'd ever run into a blood for blood situation <laughs> with ETCs if you have stage dive, not mosh pit. Yeah, but you can take this regardless of what heroic you grab. Oh, can you? Yep. Yes. Are you sure this That's isn't it, like a level yeah. 20? No, it said it storm power. It, it says, says storm be, power. Oh. It says this storm power can be selected, with either can be selected of ETCs with either. Yep. You can take it no matter which you're going. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it's cool. I, I mean, I, I still, I still, I still feel like it, it runs into the same issue of Apocalypse's dying breath, which is normally mosh pits take a lot of effort and thought to actually put a mosh pit down in a <laughs> very specific spot where you get a lot of use out of it. Having an ETC dance, I mean, it's uninterruptible. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, it's better than dying breath. I'll say that, but it's yeah. still like, it's still like rough to decide. I'm gonna die at this exact point. So you have heroes like, like Tyrell and Et Diablo, who have these like on death heroics and stuff and traits and stuff. They're kind of designed to like die. They like they have talents that are designed for it and stuff. Etc is not designed to die. Yeah. So and like, there's gonna be so many situations where like they're running away from a fight, and if like I'm gonna die, let's just go back in and do what I can. Like with Diablo, he'll have his souls to come back up. With Tyrell, he'll have the explosion to get extra kills. Etc going back in and dying when you're like in a retreating position. 
It's like, okay, I'm going back in and dying to mosh pit them for three to four seconds, and then... And then a 50 seconds. Nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's... It seems kind of unintuitive to the hero, but it's... I don't know. We have to see it before we can be too harsh on it. I think, it, it, like Jake said, there is potential plays, but we'll see. I like the, he, I like the concept. I like, I like the concept it. of it, yeah. I like the idea of the, the talents, the specialized talents for the heroes at level 20 that are yeah. independent of their heroic choice. I think that is a cool idea. And that are not generic talents, like sure. Bolt of yep. the Storm or... Theory. Exactly. Yes. So, let's talk about that next patch note. The one above it or one below it? Yeah, Jake. Below it. Which one? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Preoccupied. One, Jake? one second. Let's talk about uh, healing, uh, healing Word. Healing, healing Word change. Word. So, um, first off, it takes two auto attacks to kill Healing Word? I don't no. think so. It takes no. one. Maybe nice. they changed it internally yeah, and then they, they got confused. That's what it had to have been. They must have been internally playing with Healing Ward quite a bit. Um, this is a, a bit of a typo, but it has always been one attack on the live server. But what it says here is essentially Healing Wards now have a health pool, and it's not a single AoE to kill them. They did Remember, they, they changed it. So AoEs would hit it, <laughs> and one AoE tap would destroy it. Oh. <laughs> it was effectively not used. <laughs> and Rhaegar disappeared. So yeah. what if it has the same <laughs> HP as a totem from Rhaegar? I think that's like decent. No. It doesn't the totem doesn't Only if it heals damage. itself. Well, yeah, like, but it would only heal a very small percentage of HP. It's <laughs> just it, is healing ward really in that bad of a spot needs this change? Like Well it's always in every game. Well that's because healing ward's on eighty different heroes, like And by eighty you mean like six. Six or five. Six, six, six heroes that all happen to be supports. And no, Asmodan well. gets it as well. Yes. Whatever. Nobody cares about the Dunk Lord. Because Asmodan's played. <laughs> Only when Tempo wants to throw. <laughs> we have a, like a hundred percent win rate in tournaments with Asmodan. So. No, you don't. Can... You definitely do not. Like it's Titan definitely Arena. higher than seventy percent. We almost never lost with them in tournaments. He just got nerfed too hard. Answer was six, by the way. Six. Ah, ah, ah. I see six healing wards. Okay, fine. Fine. So many healing wards. Um, it also has a higher priority for targeting, so it's going to be easier to hit in general. Players won't be able to stand on top of it. This is a it's AOE, enough. then it doesn't matter. I know, but still, if you're just trying to click it, going to be... I suppose. Going to be a uh, uh, much gonna lesser have a bad scene time. ability. Yeah, going to have a bad time. So how do we feel? So could you make it so that you place healing wards on top of yourself so you don't want to get auto attacked because it'll actually hit healing wards over heroes? The plays are gonna be so. I was thinking that too. But that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Or just take protective shield at that point, like. So their general thought process was to force the change in positioning, for like where teams are putting it. Right now, it's just like throw it in the middle of the team fight, stand on top of it if you need to to keep it alive. That's the idea. They want people to throw it a little bit back so that it's something you kind of need to protect and like have like a you're creating a temporary area that your team can retreat to to heal while there's poking <coughs> on over a certain objective. Do we like that change in philosophy? I, do we think it's okay right now? What's the consensus? I don't really see a huge difference between either of them. It depends how much health it has. Like if you drop a side storm on it and it doesn't die, then it could be good. But if, like, one side storm can kill it or kind of like some AoE targeted thing or tar AoE like, uh, over time in an area, something or... can just, like, kind of one hit it or two hit it. It's I don't like, think well, it's... You, like, look at uh, Scouting Zone, for instance. Sure. That one hit to two hit increase made it actually a lot better. Made it a lot harder to clear at times uh, if you place it well. Uh, also, of course, the... having... The two charges made that playable more, but that change did make it significantly, like, you know, it, it helps a lot. Oh, so. yeah, we see it almost every game when we see Brightwing. It was the accumulation of the two, but it, it, there's still definitely a big difference between wild auto attack and two auto attack. That's very clear, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I personally don't think Healing Ward's, like, I think the, the blast nerf to it was a good enough nerf. Maybe yeah. it's still a little bit overtuned. I, I personally, I don't like the change, but. I don't either. We'll have to actually see how it dies. Like, what kills it so yeah. we, like, what, like, I think if, it, if it's just a, like, standard wombo, like, people diving in, like, metamorphosis and then stage dive and stuff kills it, like, just accidentally, that's not good. 
that's gonna like delete the tower. Yeah. Like it if, if, but if you have to actually use skills purposely for the object of destroying it. Yeah. You have to kind of focus effort to go after it, then it could see some play. Right. But like you guys right. mentioned, if a stray multi shot kills it, that's. <laughs> yeah. If, like, you're sure. just like mindlessly, like, you know, just anything like, just like breathes on it and it dies. Then... Right. But the bottom line is that they're trying to change the philosophy of how it's used. They want people to put it further back away from where those skill shots are going to be, or not skill shots, AoEs are going to be landed. Both those shots well, have got a pretty large range. When no one picks yes. their talent anymore, they can. <laughs> wonder okay, why no one's right. playing in the back line. Yeah, Just I mean, putting that out there. I don't be think... interesting if it really is a big nerf if Ragar will disappear again. It's true. Like He's he already fallen time. off, man. We're seeing Uther, Brightwing, and Mouth a lot now over him. Yeah. This might be the... the you guys need to... Curve. Blizzard, just buff Bloodlust. Give it like 10% more movement speed and attack speed. We're Don't huge. listen to Jake sorry, Blizzard did you guys anymore. Hear I didn't. I didn't hear like, just wow. Just give it like a five-second cooldown. <laughs> I just dropped five minutes. They don't cool down, down at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, can't it just be like Gaslo? Give it the Gaslo treatment where it's permanent. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> permanent and global. Team or no, just do it like Merc Order, where it's like if you're nearby the, the Rhaegar, it'll be permanent around you. Don't so, listen like... to Tona either. Let's just. <laughs> <laughs> and then 20 makes it global. Can... Okay, well. Afterwards <laughs> about Bloodlust. <laughs> Okay, well, let's. I guess we'll have to see uh, how that all goes. But I'm. We kind of touched on it before. Abathur changes. That's what I wanted to get He's into. Dead. He's because... done. He's done. Rip. He's gone. Rip. It sucks because like. He's actually really good. Like, people are like, Zoya's just being dumb and crazy like usual. He's actually really good. He has a hundred percent ban rate versus G two because they're monsters with him. ADRP. Both us and Maelstrom have been running him a lot in scrims. We finally, for some reason, saw just on the first win in NA recently, but he's all right. It might be broken. It might actually be broken, but it's just like they—they're not. Do they talk about anything buffing him in this? He's getting all a little bit more stab damage, so he's yeah. still going to be seen in very okay. specific compositions with with teams that are very very good with him. He still has the potential to soak. And he's going to be phenomenal on, on Illidan in, in, in those kind of heroes, sure. But if it's going to be, like, body blocked by, like, minions and stuff. Like, the only, the you're only taking away 30% of his power to give him stab damage increase? Because they want him to more be, like, a symbiote play rather than, right. I guess, backdoor locust play. Well, the bombard strain locust thing was so incredibly frustrating. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's fair. I don't, that's, I don't... So I, I can see it, and it sucks, but at the same time... You gotta think about like, not even just like the lowers, but like when you're playing solo queue and you have this Abathur that's constantly doing that tunnel. You gotta have like somebody way in the base, then you kill him, then you can finally move that on the map. No, it's something that outranges turrets like that that just pushes on its own is just bad game design. Like I don't think. Yeah, then just redesign the hero. Like they've done it how many times, Jared? They've uh, made Abathur from being like god tier to being crap, and then I god tier again. Look at like how many problems what have occurred. Here? from the design philosophy of backdooring and split pushing and how many here like Asmodan, Murky, Abathur, Gazlo, all four have been drastically nerfed and changed away from their backdoor style of play. Yeah. Just stop designing for it then. Like, well, just so that not was, working. Did you did you watch the interview of Hayoka with um Deep Row? Browder? Deep Row. Deep Row. Deep Browder. I didn't know Hayoka okay, interviewed Browder. Yeah, it was on Reddit, you know, if you read news. Um, I'm, bu I'm busy managing a team. Sorry. Whoa. And uh, moving a bed in. So well. Anyway. And moving uh, a bed. <laughs> anyway. So Browder, like, Hayoka brought up the point that basically team fights seem to be the big thing that you really want to build your team around. Is that something that we want to, like, keep going? Or do they want to emphasize other play styles? And uh, Brado was basically just talking about, you know, Abathur, and he said, at first we thought backdoor Abathur was a bad idea, so we initially, like, we sent out that tweet, and then we kind of realized that that tweet was a little bit premature, and that they want to keep something of that alive, but not entirely get rid of it. Like, because obviously Bombard is, is difficult to deal with, but they still want to keep the ability to push another lane with Abathur alive. So what, just delete all the split-pushing talents and all he has is a Locust now? Like, well, well, not... Keep the split-pushing, but delete the back door. Yeah. I think is their idea. Yeah. 
So delete all his talents that back door that push. Just them. delete the hero. No, you were. <laughs> just make it so that his locusts don't outrange turrets. The end. Yeah. So, so you delete can't, the hero you can't that deep point. tunnel deep tunnel into the back of the enemy base. Or just do the vision thing. Take the vision away. So like because some random like dumb trolls like I'm gonna put a little thing here and then deep tunnel and take hey, out a keep. Hey. Jared, we're gonna they're nerf not the balancing the this game for you and your but cronies. They should be. Okay? <laughs> the pro scene's all that matters, man. That's, wow. You can't yeah. have that wow. mentality. You can't. Jared League of Legends, is not a look why League of Legends is successful. They balance for the like 200 people that play competitively and not for the 8 million that play every single day. Okay? Not at first. I was joking. Hey. I was, I was making a joke. This guy is this joke. making fun. <laughs> Abathur will exist in a different manner in very specific situations, but I don't think he's going to be something common to see on ladder. I don't think he's going to be something common to see in competitive. Welcome to Gazlo tier, Abathur. You'll be missed. I don't know if it's quite that much. I think he'll have a very specific place, but we talked about this today. You have said it yourself. These are words from Lord Zoloff. Abathur can out-soak Lost Vikings if he's yeah. played correctly, and this will not change that. Yeah, that is true. He is. He's a monster. Right. Just soaking XP doesn't really win you games. It doesn't. You can be two, three levels up and still lose. I still think Evolved Monstrosity. Thanks, Kona. Is, uh... That was actually <laughs> well played. That was well played shots fired. I'll take that one. That was good. All right. That one was good, man. Going down the line. Anub Iraq. Beetle AI. Less booty. Quick. <laughs> nice dance. What'd you say, Anub Iraq? Oh, yeah, the bug, the beetle change. That could actually make, like, he's already seen play. Like, he sees play in EU, and he sees plays in NA scrims right now. This, like, if the uh, if it's if done the right. change to the Beatles is good enough, they, they actually can make them viable, like, legit, played all the time. Which is Because, like, really... everyone's complaint has always been the Beatles, right? Right. And, I I mean, if we have the Beatle with the lifesteal and the full-on Beatle build, uh, maybe he becomes great. Who knows? Um still think it's going to be played kind of the way Kubi's been playing around with him, where you can't you can't burrow charge in generally. It's more of an escape. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, that's, how, that's how he's been played. Yeah. Entirely. Well, since, since Rewind, since since rewind right was removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Isn't it scary that Rewind was removed, like, beginning this year? It's like four months now. We're getting old, boys. It's like, it's so weird, because I, I, I was redoing the, like, a guide, and I was just like, oh, yeah, because you know they nerfed this, and I was like, that was like six months ago. Oh, it's just, it's so weird to think about that. Anyway, uh, Anubarak, really happy to see him. He's still going to be banned uh, when you're playing against Team Arthos. That's about it. Five blood for bloods. Too strong. Yeah, he's got blood for blood. Right. Web wrap's actually really good. Web wrap is, yeah. yo, web wrap breaks spectator, and I realized that happened on uh, Heroes of the Dorm, too. Like, everybody, as soon as there's a web wrap, the observers also get the sound effects muffled. Yes. It's always done that. It's been happening like, for a while. I know it's been it's been going on for a while, but I was like, man, here's the dorm. Did not expect anybody to use web wrap. <laughs> that is rough, but it makes for some amusing times. It does. All right, Illidan, no major changes. Murky in a good spot. Vikings, Chen. long Chen bow three. Oh, okay, this is a big one. Did we, did we skip Chen? Oh, we did. Uh, there's nothing no changes. to really say. <laughs> there's just a bunch of heroes where it's like, hey, I know we said that these heroes were booty yeah. tier. It, it, uh, we're so, not changing them. So Vikings are receiving a relatively large nerf. When the long boat is destroyed, the Vikings are stunned for 1.5 seconds. That is basically 16 esports years. It's almost as long as Mosh Pit when you dive with death metal. What? What 1.5 seconds not is like not equal to four. <laughs> not equal to four minutes. Definitely not Guys. equal to four minutes. <laughs> I'm a mathologist, and I think the I'm change is this. big enough to where it'll be very sim, not as strong, but very similar to the Odin nerf, where it was a play style change. Of course, the soaking and the early game that won't change at all. But how like right now in team fights, Lost Viking players are very aggressive. They'll come in from flanks. But with like, and there's a lot of times you'll see where Vikings get caught out of position and they'll use Longboat to save their lives. This is a yes. situation now where they will be cleaned up after that. So it's a, it's definitely a, you have to play safer on them and you can't be as yellow ham on them. Well, it's not going to kill a hero. Like that's just okay. they're, uh, the soaking's too good. But and the damage is the same. If all it is is a stun, it's like a direct play style change. You have to be smarter with them. I can agree with that. It, yeah, they will still be used a lot. 
What Isn't about that the play concerning? again? Buff? Yes, I was just about to talk about that. So from play again, <laughs> it says they're adding full heal to the Lost Vikings in addition to its current functionality, which is like warps, death timer, or Vikings that are currently dead to the alive. But what's the like? Their philosophy is to take away second health bars, and they're putting it back in. I realize yeah, it's, it's like a, a second life bar, but... but it's not a second life bar with a longbow <laughs> made, which does a billion damage. That's different. Is it? Yeah, kind of. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I don't like that they're. I I'd like to see play again picked more, but I'm not Doubt sure it. that this is. By it's more, just... you mean like at all? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but I've never like used them. it. Just I've once, literally man. never used it. <laughs> but. Use but it once in BlizzCon. <laughs> it would be cool if it was like if it was like an, if you you tap R and both of them just like you know there's like a giant coin that pops up on stream and then all of a sudden like they both show up but it's a two second channel. Yeah. If you get to choose, if you got to like, if you could like use it kind of like a Nidus network and you can like spawn those two like reviving Vikings at like a place you have vision, that would be like potentially playable and cool. But the fact that you have to summon them on your one Viking, like the reason you want, the only reason you want your Vikings together is to longbow. Yeah. You don't have longbow in this situation, so right. the reason you go that is like do split pushing, counter pressure, do mercs and stuff. So if you could like summon them randomly, maybe. But why have those like they're they're you, they're nothing outside without longbow and team fights like. They have spin. But the yeah. point is, the point <laughs> is, longbow raid. You get a second life bar, you come out of it, you have a 1.5 second stun. During the longboat raid, you do ridiculous amounts of damage. You play again, you're stunned for two seconds, half a second more, you don't get the actual longboat ridiculous amounts of damage, and you only get two-thirds of an extra life bar. Yeah. All right, aside from the whole well, second health bar argument, what if they took away the channel, and if you res... Great. If you res the the Vikings, you also get to reset your non heroic cooldowns. No, Too still much? not good enough. Uh, not good enough. No, that's still not good enough. Uh, no, I don't know. I would, maybe because you could like cue someone. You hit R and then you cue someone again, and yeah. you could maybe delete a carry if you had all three Vikings on that one person. Yeah, that's possible. And then you maybe. have a lot more mobility. With you get a second jump, you get a second run, you get. You maybe. even get a second shield. Maybe Norse Force. Like that would be. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna see it. The double Q is the only thing that might have. Going. Yeah, but yeah, oh. and that's like a, a heavy might, like maybe. And then I they know. do that, and it's secretly OPS hell. Or you could just hit. Long, <laughs> exactly. you, could just, you could just go longboat right, hit R, and do the exact same thing because you can delete carries with longboat. So anyway, anyway for those. Okay. Vikings weird spot. Banshee. They could just remove Wait. longboat, and then now we have to use play again. <laughs> Yeah, Sylvanas, no which they Vikings. only brought up as Banshee Queen. Yep. <laughs> That's a good point. They're, and then, uh, this is another one of, yeah, she's cool. We like her. We're going to make possession a little bit stronger, it sounds like. Or nerf Wailing Arrow, I don't know. Uh, I don't think Wailing Arrow needs nerf. It's really good. <laughs> we, we've <laughs> we've theory crafted a bunch in the past about what they could do to, to change possession. I think a lot of the consensus was to have it be sort of like an AoE to take over whole waves. I think a lot of us agreed that was. But that's that'd be so. Sick. No. That'd be sick. Whoever, if it takes over a whole wave. I want to wave, go back and watch that episode. If I, if I agreed to saying it should take over a whole wave, I want to hit myself in the head because it has. It would have to be no. like it would have to be like a, a promote thing though, seconds. where it's like lasts for like ten seconds. Like you take over a wave for ten seconds or something, and even then that's pushing it. But that's another discussion. We're not going to get into that right now. Um, I don't think it was in the patch notes. Can we talk about the just like really quick? Uh, the stuff CSD posted yesterday. I'm trying to find the link to it. About oh, the experience the, on uh, Tomb. Oh, yes. Tomb. It's a little bit different, yeah. Is I'm it... trying to find the exact link here. He's listening in chat probably, so he can link it for us. It's actually really cool. Um, I was I knew there was an experience different on that map. I didn't realize it was that big. And when you look at the numbers at first hand, it's like a 15 difference, a 12 difference, and a 10 difference. doesn't seem like... Or maybe it's 25. I don't know. But uh, for every single uh, Video, wave... Yeah. It's like 111 experience missing. So like for each, like if you count all three waves, that's 333 experience missing. That's equivalent to being down a level and getting a kill. That's like a lot of experience missing, and I didn't realize that. Uh, it was like, I always knew there was less experience, 
Um, but I, I think it's really cool that Blizzard like just was like, let's make the experience less on this map and see how it goes, because it's such a small and aggressive map that uh, that they're that they're willing to like. When we think about balance changes, how often do we talk about the experience we gain from minions and stuff, like as a way to fix a map or as a way to fix like you know make the game more enjoyable to play? And like Blizzard's just experimenting with the stuff on like like just like releasing a new map. Let's just see what it's like to make the, ex the experience less. And like no one's had complaints about the map. Like no one feels that it's a slower map when it comes to like getting ten and stuff, just because of how aggressive it is when getting kills and stuff. Yeah, right. I think it's really smart. Honestly, they probably just made that internal tweak, and I think it's just a smart call. It's not a game-breaking thing. It doesn't actually affect anything at the end of the day. And it's just shout out to CSD for putting this work in. Yeah. Honestly, we can see all the little Google people popping in in the corner. They're like, oh, cool, let's look at this stuff. We got a ferret, we got an ibex, we got a leopard, there's an orangutan, a cor camera, a sheep. And the things here, that entertain you. Here comes right. our honor. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was <laughs> Ali who put the, uh, who actually got the values, though, didn't he? Uh, Ali posted a follow up post where he put the scaling in there, too. Because oh, okay. they have different scalings know. per level in addition to base value. I just I didn't know he linked it in chat, and I just saw Ali stuff. Yeah, he did a follow-up post, I think, after Sea of Steve, where in addition to the different base values, they also have different scaling charts. Oh, snap. That's sick. I didn't... So, and some of them are, like, different as well. Like, the wizard minions just gain a flat one additional XP per minute. And hmm. instead of crazy stuff like one for the first minute, one for the second, two for the third, and doing... I don't know. They have some weird, crazy stuff with XP minion grill. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Like, but... They're just like, willing to experiment like that. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to see if they continue, if they change <coughs> any of the existing maps. Like if they change Haunted Mines to do this or something. Have its own XP grill. It is, yeah, it's interesting. We yeah, hadn't, anything, it's, like you said, up. we hadn't thought about it. And it's a, it is a cool way to tweak maps, especially based on size. Mm -hmm. Neat stuff. Alrighty. Um, well, moving on, we can talk about individual player exposure. Earth One put out a video about a week ago. I know this is something Jared's been wanting to talk about. So, Jared, take it away. Uh, I should have had the link prepared, but Earth, yeah, Earth One made a video talking about the difference between League of Legends and Heroes for like individual player, uh, player exposure. The main point was right now when people cheer for a team. I'll get it. Like you, you, you just che you just cheer for that team. Like when you think of Tempo Storm, you don't think of you rarely, like, unless you're a diehard fan, like, you watch all the time, you don't think Arthalon, Dreadnought, Glaurong no. Soldier. You, you think, you, you just think Tempo Storm. Like, th there's no ways, like, just in-game alone, that play, like, you, you it, unless you're actually hovering over a player's name, like, them and watching their hero in-game, you don't see the player's name anywhere in-game. You have to be looking at their hero specifically. So if someone's, like, say, playing a hero like Abathur, how often are you going to see Soldier's name or Dunk Train's name when he's playing out there? You know, the, the, the in-game tools alone that help build a player's like just hype for that player and like non getting to know them. It's not, it almost, not, almost non-existent. Yeah, it's. Well, remember when Shimbara was on? He talked about a lot of ideas they had. So it's not like they're not thinking about this sort of thing. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. they mentioned the idea of having a a thing that you can pull up. Uh, in the game, where it has the top damage on the blue team and the top damage on the red team, and it pulls it up on the screen, and it shows, like, the portrait of Jaina. Maybe it says Arthlon, and then it shows the portrait, yeah. and it says and it shows Syracuse, and it matches them up, and it shows you their stats, right? They've thought about this sort of thing. It's just the game's in beta, and individuality, from that perspective, is really hard. I mean... When it comes to casters, there's responsibility in terms of call, calling out that player. Oh my goodness, that Emerald Wind won that fight. Yeah. And I know Kobe and I, we make a point to do that kind of stuff, but it's still how it's much of a easy. how much of a story does that build, right? We can say we can say that Dreadnought won that fight for the team, but does that make you a Dreadnought fan or or a Dunk Train fan or whatever? And even then, like when you're when you're saying like, oh my God, Dreadnought won that fight for that team. Or something like that. It's like you only see Dreadnought if and only if he's on that on the screen at the time that you're saying that. And then as soon as you move to some other point of the screen somewhere else and Dreadnought's on it, it's like, 
oh wait, who's Dreadnought again? It's just like they're just saying that. It's it's there's yeah. is Dreadnought a they hero? Just, is that yeah, a player? Hero is that a player? And wait, I mean, wait. if you're if you're casting like a bunch of teams that maybe you're not familiar with either, it's also difficult because I'm just like. Oh man, that Rhaegar. You Uther said, you said just died. Yeah. That Uther, man. Well, and then like later on, I'll try and like make note, like yeah, I gotta remember who that Uther's name is because Uther... I mean that's almost like a, a but, different story because we're talking about the the teams that are. Oh well, yeah, be, but quote, I mean quote, we come from right? casting league though. We we both cast league, and it's much easier in that yeah. client to say the player's name because it, it just it's much there. easier visually represented. You know, like, you know, where suddenly, like, you might not even look at top, like, let's they take top lane, for instance. You got, for the most part, it's like a tank versus a tank, like EDC versus Stitches. You're never going to be watching top lane unless there's a gank. So if it's a new team you're casting, the first time you may be seeing their name, like, in the game, could be in a team fight at level 13. And that's the first time you get to, like, of course, like, you should glance up there every once in a while, but you're not sitting there watching the top lane for hours. You very rarely go up there like unless something has happening. But for the most part, it's just like a soak off. So that player does not like that. That's just like, okay. Then he stage dives in, and then suddenly we see the ETC's name. You know, the, it's it's not represented at all inside the game client. And not even inside the game client, but we don't have a draft client either that has people's names yeah. either. So it's yep, just like, oh man, Zagara is being picked by the enemy team. True. It's probably gonna soldier. Yeah, that, that's also like a lot. Until you get into the game, <laughs> true. I've done that so many that's times. A good point. What was <laughs> that like, hero ex Pecky like played a lot? The one where you teleported around with Malkazer or something. Mal I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Like whenever, whenever a hero is picked, like a champion's picked for someone that's super hype, it's like boom. You know, Cassidy. Yes, Cassidy. Like you're like they got Cassidy. That guy's sick on him, and like you see it in the draft, like boom, he's on Cassidy. You know right then and there, and that builds like that hype. Like we know K1 Pro is a god tier Jaina, so the moment it's picked in draft, it says K1 Pro Jaina, and it's like, yes, that is. I think sick. we tried to do this immediately after Heroes of the Dorm, and Vortex was playing, and they're like, we, they drafted Illidan, fans gonna be on Illidan, and it was Bobby Hank Hill. like, guys, come on, yeah, what, what do you think? <laughs> fans play as Rage Assassins for Vortex. But, but, I mean, we. Like, even if you're building the hype, it just, I mean, this is probably just cast of problems, but it just sucks because, like, you don't know until the game actually starts and you're in the game. You can't actually really say that much in the loading screen except for what their compositions are generally and, like, how they normally play it. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of things that they could possibly be doing that I hope are going to be implemented soon. And yeah, it's already hard enough in Heroes of the Storm to really stand out a ton as opposed to something like League of Legends where, like, you know, the efforts of the one can really outweigh the mistakes of the rest, but in this game, it's kind of like everybody kind of blends together a little bit more. So that gives us reason to make sure we're distinguishing the players in other aspects that we can, because we're not going to have those rising stuff. Like, we're not going to have those start, like, playmaking guys like Faker and stuff in this game. Like, that's very rarely going to happen. You're not, mm -hmm. there, there, there's no hero. The game's not designed to have one person, like, just destroy a team. And like that person gets a pentakill, and that person just got like that. game's not designed for that. So the other aspects of how we present the game, and how the game is presenting itself, needs to help towards that, like just a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's also the issue too of the game being a lot more fast-paced, and there you don't have that 15-minute laning phase where it's like, okay, let's go take a look over this lane. We have a ton of time to like spotlight and talk about these heroes that are in this lane. Like you mentioned, the top lane with the soaking. We're, we're probably not going to go up there, like you said, unless there's a gank. So we're very unlikely as casters to have time just to go up there to highlight the players and talk about what they like to do in the middle of teamfights. So there's just no time for that. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but the game is very quick in terms of what casters need to be covering before even level 4 hits. It's a very fast game. Like there's yep. no 30 minutes of farming like in other MOBAs. This is like the action kicks off from the start. Like there's like mm -hmm. 2 to 3 minutes of downtime and then like tribute spawning, fight. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got like a minute and a half, another tribute, fight. Mercs are being taken, contention over the boss. Like it's just yeah. so much Heroic quicker. Talents. Like, yeah. Yeah, you don't have that. time to do these like let's sit here and break down the stats mm -hmm. of, you know, Iacona for the next 5 minutes. Like there's no time for that. So it, it, it's just, it's not like, that's not a bad thing that the right. game's that fast. That's like what makes this game awesome, but it just takes away from the individual player. True. Mm -hmm. And we need to be working to try and hopefully get to a point where 
everything like uh we, we've said a hundred times the draft is so, sometimes the most exciting part of a series like there's so many times where something crazy happens in a draft and that's like when he picked that hero that was awesome like there's nothing more fun than the draft at times and it, it, it's a large focus on why teams win or lose a game so like incorporating like player names into the draft and making sure that we're like we know the moment like maybe we, we make it to like to the point where when you lock in a hero you have to like type in the name like Arthlon or something wouldn't that just be like first come first serve yeah wouldn't that be nice if that worked with bands in the game system? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> hey. Someday, boys, someday, Some... the in-game draft Soon. will be less booty butt cheeks. Soon. <laughs> we can continue hoping. Now, we are down to the final 15 minutes, which means we have to do shout Oh, snap! I don't know if we can even do Kubi's question. You guys look so dejected. Is that is that? What? I mean, you have like five. I mean, minutes. last 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 week's Kubi's question. No, sorry, two weeks ago Kubi's question. That was last week's. It was last week's. Yeah, that one sucked. <laughs> oh, actually, got a lot of good feedback. One you dude. Got one, one tweet. Dude. One got, tweet. Got a lot of good feedback. Somebody... That. Actually, I had a lot of other people yeah. say that. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? A hundred percent of your feedback yeah. was they good. They liked the it question was, because the answers, not because of the question. Because you have a no, creative I had a lot of people and say I interesting have a answer for personality that. cast that were able to save you from the poo mess you made. Poo mess. Poo mess. It's like... I could go in right now. I could go in. That's, that's <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm actually going to take the high road here. That's fine. Okay. Do you want to try to do it? I don't, I don't know what your question no, no, is. No, I, I have way too long of a question. Is. We're not getting through it. Yeah. Next week. Though. Not going to happen. Or the weekend. I mean... I, find I, out. Actually, multiple. Times. It's it's yes. getting to the point where we uh, we don't necessarily always have time. For Actually, it, I got so. something we can talk about. It won't take the fifteen minutes. We got this is good. So, think of like a situation, the community like there's a hole in it right now. There's nothing that's like grassroots, run by the community. Like there's nothing that's like crowdfunded. That's like feels like this is what the community fought for. Jake knows where I'm going with this. This is like something so, like a, an event or a tournament that was like. Help run by the community, put on by great personalities that have been around helping grow the scene from the start. That would be really cool. I heard that this place called Town Hall Heroes is selling t-shirts. And all proceeds from that event, <laughs> Jake Smith Gale. Stop that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so we're, we're selling t-shirts, Jake Smith put on the screen. Um, all, all, anything that we gain from it is going towards the tournament. Running the very first Town Hall Heroes Invitational or tournament something. And all of the money we earn from it is going towards the prize pool. So not only do you get to look swag as... Swag as Jake. Swag as Jake. Swag as Jake. Yeah. But you also get to help the scene. Now, if you're watching, if you're listening to the MP3 or you're on iTunes... Link the street. Link it in the chat, Jack. You just yeah. go to teespring.com slash town hall heroes if you're watching live right now there is the link getting flooded in the chat and let me just fix my webcam mm. and if you look above me if you're watching on youtube you can actually just click that box above me that will take you to the url for the link there's a million ways to find it but guys I'll just tell you this. We've sold 25 shirts, and that means we already have over $100 in prizing for the event. And that's pretty cool, right? Our goal is 40 so that'll put us around $200 in prizing. And then we're going to do an additional fundraiser after that to help build up a prize pool. We're yep. tossing around various ideas for a, a tournament. We need to talk to the teams and see what, what, what makes the most sense, right? There's a lot of ideas that we have right now as to what it's actually going to be. But we want to make it something. Wondrous. Wondrous. Look at this guy above me, this way. Which, well, Look at this wow. handsome devil of a man named Sham2. And how great he looks with that deep V. There's a deep V cut of the town hall's here. <laughs> sure. You can look just... There isn't actually a deep V cut. It is a V-neck cut. Oh, there's, a, there's not as deep a V, but... You I'll can cut look it. almost cut it. as swagalicious it. No, as this beautiful you. bastard you up here. You will tailor your shirts. I'm going to tailor my shirt to get the deeper v-neck. You know it. Oh, boy. I'm terrified. Wrong button. What is the... Eh. 
what is okay. what is what does Blackheart say? What are you waiting for? Go out and grab it. Yeah, something like that. Go out and get it. Something like that. I don't speak Close Blackheartian. Wait, Go Vaughan. grab it. Go grab it. Go out and grab it. Yeah, I think it's grab it. Yeah, you just got put on the voice, and it just makes sense. Well, I guess the final point we'll make tonight before we shuffle off to our shout-outs is they have announced a little bit more in terms of detail for the launch of the game. They are doing a celebration in London. It's called The Nexus is Calling June. Join the launch celebration on June 1st. It's going to be at the old Billingsgate in London, UK in the evening of June 1st. Look at that pretty logo. How it's such a dumb picture. Uh, true. Was, That's actually what they did in London. Guys, oh my god, they actually put the reflection in the river, too. Look at that. Maybe it was actually there. It was actually there, Kyle. Photoshop. Yeah, what is Photoshop? Guys, we're actually two weeks out from open data and a month, less than a month from the game being live. That's freaking <sighs> Feels sick. good, bro. Feels good, that bro. That is so sick. So, Yeah. Pretty exciting. Hopefully, I mean, I remember the StarCraft launch. They they did a little bit more. They kind of went around the globe. It went like from Australia to Korea to France to California or something like that. But they had a big 24-hour stream that went across the globe. This is a little bit more centralized just for London. Still going to be quite cool. And let us know if you guys are going. I don't think any of us will be there, but it will be a um, a pretty cool event regardless. Super pumped for the game to be live, but it is time for those final shout-outs. And, Jared, you got your thumbs in the sky. Tell me why. He's happy. I'm happy, man. Shout-outs? Really? Yeah. Okay, uh, you guys follow me at Tempest Away. I am the manager and coach for Tempest Storm. I'm moving into the team house this Saturday, so that'll be hype. Uh, once I'm there, like, there's going to be loads of content coming out from us. Not just, like, e heroes videos, but we're going to do, like, daily, like, in the life of Tempest Storm videos and... Like watch, like record Dread doing the dumb stuff he does in his daily life, and you know this is, it'll be a lot of fun once we're you know we're all there and producing stuff. Um, we got WCA coming out. We are working really hard for that, um, really aggressively hard for that. We're hoping we like we're we're making top two. We're making top two. That's that's it. We're we're doing it, boys. And um, follow the team, follow the show. <laughs> You're so convincing. Follow the team, please. If you oh, have time, <laughs> very soon. Like, I have like I, I don't want to give a date, but we're really close to launching the guide section for heroes on the TempleStorm.com. We're Ooh. really close. Like we've started, we've started putting the like, websites like the, the guides on the website. There's some bugs that need to be coded out, but it's it's almost there, guys. And we've got lots of great guides prepared for you guys. It's gonna be hype. Also, I'm cracking down on the team. They're gonna all be streaming like five times as much, like. Yeah, they never stream. Like Soldier Girl. and Godrun are the only ones that get like decent hours. Like everyone is gonna be putting in like forty to fifty hours at least a month. I even like so. reach out to them like, "Yo, I'll host you." Yeah. Play video games. So expect the streams coming as well. That's all I got. Tempo Storm hype. Good, good. Kubis Maximus. I have an announcement to make. <gasps> is it done? Rip. Guys, the candle. How many episodes did it make? It, it is done. Since October. It is done. Since this October. Was full of candle? Not wax. Full candle. of candle. Not wax. Candle. Full it of took, candle. It, it took seven months? Yeah, about that. So, almost Every seven week. months. Every week for a couple hours. It is done. Now I can drink out of it. Excellent. <laughs> 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 so, all right, we got that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to be casting tomorrow for ESL. Major League, of course, with Jake over on twitch.tv slash underscore ESL underscore heroes. Monday is the beginning of WCA. Of course, Jake and I will be casting that as well. Very, very excited about it. Of course, we've been hyping it up all show. Massive prize pool. All the big teams in NA are going to be there. So super excited about that. And da, 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 thank you to our guest, Mr. Iacona, of course, for coming on. Excellent times. We appreciate it very much. I think that's it for me. Kevo. That's really too much for me. Um, been streaming quite a bit. Just follow me on Twitter. You'll see what I'm up to. Uh, casting Enter the Storm on Saturday. Just a storm. Qualifiers. Uh, EU stuff. I've been really liking casting EU lately. 
So, yeah, that'll be Saturday morning-ish, 10 a.m. Eastern, some weird time European, 1 o'clock, no, wait, 7 o'clock PST? I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, that's about it for me. Uh, Twitter.com slash M2, as always. All right, Iacona. Um, Shout-outs to uh, Town Hall, of course, for having me on here. You guys are the best. Uh, shout outs also to my team and um, owner Jesse, and I'd like to give shout outs to uh, Oxygen for uh, carrying me, and uh, shout outs to <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to Ark Panucci and also to uh, Rajar for just being there and just talking to me a lot and helping me through figuring out things. Um, also, if you want to, you or you can find me on Twitter at uh, twitter.com slash iacona13. It's like right below, like right there. And on Twitch, um, it's twitch.tv slash iacona. There's no 13. The inconsistencies hurt, man. I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like a truther. Speak yes. for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry that happened. Can you say yeah. Lily one more time? Lily? Hey. It's a stand for show. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, same old stuff. You can follow me Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Solid Geek GG. Across the board, consistency is there. Like Kubi mentioned, tomorrow <laughs> night, we have Cognitive Gaming versus Stellar Lotus. That is happening live. But after that, we have a makeup game, which was actually just played last night between Cloud and Milstrom and Stellar Lotus. So we'll be casting those two matches tomorrow night. Like Kubi mentioned, Sunday we will be flying to Burbank, California to cast WCA for our first ever studio broadcast. What we do here is nice and neat, but it's a living room when it boils down. This is going to be a full production team working with us to bring heroes to the room. Living rooms in space? <sighs> yes. That's my dance. That's my space dance. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really cool. 19 grand on the line for that event, WCA. Honestly, the biggest event here to date for Heroes in terms of the competitive scene. Of course, Heroes of the Dorm, massive, huge ESPN, different beast because that's not necessarily our core esports community. Uh, on that note, guys, that's going to do it for episode 62. Icona, thank you for joining us. And next week, we will not have a show on Wednesday. There is a chance that we will have a show on Thursday or Friday. So the way that you'll find out is by following at Town Hall Heroes on Twitter, up there. Go follow that on Twitter. You can check out the Facebook page. We have a website, townhallheroes.com. There's actually a bajillion outlets to get information about our show. Final plug, buy a t-shirt. You support esports. You support us, and it makes you an awesome person. This is Ball Town Hall Heroes, episode 62. My name is Zoya, and that guy is Kabi. Men are ashamed to jack it, but I think it's better to go!